When our hero woke up, he was standing on a snowy mountain, looking at the dragon that was right in front of him. The dragon, addressing the young man, asked not to worry because he was on his side. But our hero did not understand at all what the dragon was going to do with him, because in front of him was a dragon who could speak a human language, which surprised our hero very much. At that moment, the dragon was saying that it didn't matter, because these people were coming here to kill them. At that moment, he looked in the other direction, because enemy ships were heading straight at them from there. He didn't understand why people were going to kill them, or how our hero was even connected to this dragon. The dragon was thinking that there were too many of them. That's the only thing you cared about, looking at the enemies from the other side, he said. Then the young man, looking at the dragon, asked if they and humanity really wanted to destroy each other. After which of course the dragon realized that the guy's guesses were correct. Their relationship had always been hostile, they were and would continue to be so, the dragon thought. Therefore, people were heading straight here and they had little time, saying that he would resist in his own way since he had been doing this for a hundred years. The next moment, the dragon broke from its place, and our hero tried to cover his face from the force that came from the dragon. Looking at him, the young man tried to stop him, but he did not understand how he could do it, because he had to kill a thousand people, and the situations when he had to kill someone, or they would kill him. The Shogi Club Our hero was sitting playing Shogi, and the next moment he realized that it was already the third time, addressing his opponent, he was very happy, saying that he had come up with a very cool move. The young man, watching this game, reported that of course the young man played well, but the young man would lose like that after 13 moves, explained to him so that his friend would look. The guy understood that he could not win and then offered our hero to play another game. But the young man understood that, after looking at his watch, he had to leave already, because it was already very late. Therefore, having gathered, our hero asked his friend to turn to Rieka, because he was sure that the girl would agree to play with him pointing to a girl who was sitting nearby reading a book. His friend reported that the guy's tactics of the game were invincible, and he had such an unusual style of play that it was even nice to lose. But our hero did not listen to the chatter at all, he only said goodbye to them. And the girl who recently read a book looked at the young man attentively and smiled after him. Our hero's name is Miyako Hoshi. His family is not particularly rich, so in order to pay for private school tuition, the hero had to earn extra money. At this moment, our hero was just running to one of these side jobs. If the student had good grades in the subjects, he could be exempted from tuition fees. But since he was not serious in the humanities, this was not his option. Therefore, our hero could only run for a part-time job immediately after graduation, which is exactly what he was doing. Standing at the traffic light, he realized that he had little time left and needed to run faster towards work. But it was at such moments that our hero realized that everything was not on his side waiting for the traffic light to turn green, and became increasingly angry that everything was unfair to him that day. Our hero, starting from the traffic light, realized that once the light turned green, he could get to work on time. The next moment, when he ran into the store, he saw that there was a criminal in the store who pointed a gun at the girl. Our hero managed to hide, but when he was hiding, suddenly the robber heard a strange sound. The girl could not answer anything, all that remained was to remain silent. The guy prayed that the sales girl, Tsuji Senpai, would stall for time, the one who was standing at the checkout, because it was necessary to call the police as soon as possible. At that moment, our hero took out his phone and thought about what he needed to call. Then he noticed another man hiding behind the shelves, it was the manager who hid and did not try to help the girl. The robber's nerves were running out, pointing a gun at the girl, he reported that he would kill her now if she did not stop bullying him. Our hero understood that it was necessary to save her, so running forward with the phone in his hands, the young man tried to protect the girl. When the robber saw the guy running at him, he pointed the gun directly at Hoshi, and the next moment he shot our hero. The only thing our hero remembered was that it was very cold and painful, and he saw a lot of faces around him. Falling into oblivion, he asked that this not be done to him, and the next moment, when the darkness receded, our hero woke up in the middle of ice and snow. Looking at himself, he realized that he had been shot. Turning around, the young man thought about what the afterlife really looked like, asking questions about it. He saw icicles everywhere and endless icy landscapes, but he didn't feel the cold at all. And there was also an incredibly huge dragon in front of him, which the young man was looking at. At that moment, the dragon, seeing our hero, asked him not to worry because he was on his side. Hoshi thought that it was really the afterlife because he had met a talking dragon. 
After hearing about the afterlife that the guy was talking about, the dragon did not understand at all what the young man was talking about. After all, the guy suddenly appeared on his territory, as the dragon thought, and even carried all sorts of nonsense about things that he himself could not understand. Having heard that the dragon was talking about some territory, the young man now realized that these were his lands. The dragon reported that these territories were indeed his, or rather this one was the singularity that he was supposed to protect. From here, a special energy called the Dragon Vein begins to flow out. He had to live here to manage and coordinate it. After listening to the dragon's story, our hero thought that it was very different from the afterlife that he had imagined earlier. The dragon also told our hero that he was protecting the sacred mountain on which he is located. The Singularity Mountain and its mismanagement can lead to the end of the earth. The dragon also explained that, with proper use, you can even bless the land for a glorious harvest. Then suddenly, as if by the way, he asked our hero who he was and why the young man came to his territory at all. Not expecting such questions, our hero answered thoughtfully that he was an ordinary high school student, thinking that at least he was like that before his death. Of course, the dragon did not understand what the mysterious word, high school student meant, because it was the first time he had heard of such a thing. The dragon asked the guy if he was saying that he was dead, then why was he still alive? Our hero did not understand at all why the dragon was asking him such questions. It was the afterlife, and everyone should have been dead in it. The dragon reported that since the young man says that this was the afterlife, then where was our hero before his death? But after hearing these questions, the guy sort of explained that he was in Japan. He was shot in a store while he was on a side job. The dragon was very surprised that the young man still remembered who he was in that world. Our hero of course remembered everything, and his name and age and family, and the fact that he was a man, not a dog or a cat. At this moment, the dragon carefully decided to take a closer look at the young man, because it is possible that he was reborn and also retained his memory. Upon hearing about the rebirth, our hero was very surprised. Now everything became clear to the dragon, namely that our hero died and then was reborn right here. If that was the case, then he was a demon lord. After hearing about the demon lord, our hero did not understand at all what the dragon was talking about. The same one wondered if the young man was not a human being. But to him, he didn't look like a human at all, now that the young man was the king of spirits, able to control magical power and nature. In short, our hero turned out to be the lord of demons in this world. Listening to the dragon, the young man thought that he did not understand anything at all from what the dragon was telling him, trying to make sense of that nonsense. The dragon decided to explain to the young man that the demon lord is the one who can control the power of nature itself. His life is thriving thanks to the dragon vein and magical power, and this vein fills the world, and the demon lord is able to use this magical power. To connect with this power, the demon lord creates a magic core. He creates a special maze and hides it. After hearing about the dragon's story, our hero decided to ask how the lord hides it. Then the dragon explained that so that people would not plunder it. The core can also be improved with the help of magical materials. Our hero certainly did not think that he could be a demon lord and immediately confessed this to the dragon that was in front of him. The young man wondered if the demon lord could even have allies. First of all, the dragon family, also the fairies who control nature. There are also evil spirits and demons, the dragon explained. However, fairies were almost completely enslaved by humans, evil spirits were sealed, and demons were captured and subdued, he explained to our hero. But after hearing this, our hero simply could not believe it, realizing that it turned out that only the dragon family was on his side. The young man wondered how many dragons he had at his disposal. And the dragon replied that he was the only one at his disposal. And a few decades ago, the king of the flame dragons lived in the eastern lands, but he was captured by the eastern empire, and since then people have continued to use him as a tool to use the dragon vein. Upon hearing this, our hero was insanely shocked. But at that moment, the dragon did not pay any attention to him at all, because he saw enemies who should have already approached them. It looks like people really came to destroy them. Our hero, hearing this phrase, was shocked by what the dragon said. Then, flying up, the dragon reported that there were really too many people, he couldn't cope with all of them, and he needed help. The dragon thought to himself that he had outlived many humans for a hundred years, and therefore decided that he had to use a deadly blizzard to defeat them. The girl who sat on the smaller dragon, who asked everyone to prepare to activate 15% of the ice shields against this snowstorm that attacked them. And everyone had to concentrate their magic power on maintaining the barrier. 
The dragon, not expecting this, saw that people had broken through his trap. And the guy who was at the head of them was watching the battle carefully. He thought that now it was time, finally the time to carry out their grand plan. Three months before the invasion of the Argyle Kingdom. A meeting was held, and the man sitting at the head reported that he thanked that every head of the knightly order had also come. As everyone present knew, Argyle became a great knightly power thanks to the magical power of dragon veins. However, he wanted to point out that it had been more than ten years since the magical energy began to fade, and they needed to capture the dragon vein to save their kingdom. This time, the chief of staff of the military directorate, Riol Jaford, wanted to be responsible for the attacks himself. He has developed 27 strategies and thought through 150 possible developments. After hearing that the guy had come up with so many strategies that no one could believe it, Riol, without paying attention, began to continue talking about how, in the end, the seventh plan turned out to be perfect. Everyone asked the commander to reveal the details of this plan. The knightly order of the Kingdom of Argyle consists of five buildings. The leader of the First Corps of the Sigil of Hador. The First Corps is a unit of knights consisting of 50,000 people who specialize in unearthly battles and ride dragoons, one of the varieties of dragons. The Second Corps is responsible for the internal security of the kingdom, and often rides horses. Its leader was Aureus Zarek, and the Third Corps are the sorcerers on dragoons responsible for long-range attacks. The leader of the Third Corps was Rhianna Kyrgyz. There was also a Fourth Corps that used wyverns and attacked the enemy with fire magic from the air. The leader of the Fourth Corps is Armin Nekin. The Fifth Corps is an elite squad of knights of the kingdom consisting of ten people, the leader of which is Fred Kerbin. They are natural dragon riders and are capable of using dragon veins. Each invasion was destroyed by the premature impact of an ice storm, the commander reported. Since the dragon is able to sense the approach of their army as well as the number of soldiers, everyone was of course shocked by the information that the dragon could determine and even the amount. After all, the king of ice dragons is able to determine the distance and number of objects with incredible accuracy. And after learning this information, everyone thought about what they could do with it. The captain also thought that they could use his ability to their advantage. 5,000 knights of the First Corps will stand in the vanguard, and behind them, out of range of the dragon's ability, they will be supported by knights of the Third Corps, protecting them with an ice barrier. By studying ancient records, they were able to determine the power distance of his ice storm. The ice dragon will wait before using the ice storm to hit as many enemies as possible. When 90% of their forces enter the affected area, this dragon will use the storm. One core uses magic tools, three and five uses the strongest fire magic to support them. The invasion is expected to take place in August. Therefore, with the help of fire magic, they will be able to neutralize 85% of the ice storm. The Ice King uses all his energy to complete the fight with a single attack. This is the result of excessive self-confidence. It will take some time to restore this amount of energy. At the same moment, the fourth and fifth core attack. Victory will be practically in their hands if they can neutralize the effect of the ice storm. The lives of so many dead knights allowed them to develop this ingenious strategy, the captain reported. The dragon, upon learning about this, thought that if they used a huge amount of fire, then they could defeat him and had to hurry up and restore their energy. Addressing our hero as the Lord of Demons, the dragon informed him that his attack had failed. Now he had to teach him how to defend himself in order to activate magic. Our hero had to bend her to his will. There are 16 attributes, they are based on fire, water, earth, and wind. Then there is an explosion, ice, wood, and a storm. As the young man should have guessed by now, the dragon's attribute was ice. By developing basic attributes, the young man will be able to use higher attributes, the dragon informed our hero. The young man asked what attribute belonged to him. The dragon realized that our hero's attribute was emptiness. The void attribute is a feature of the demon lord. If we talk about this attribute, it is the creation of magic cores of various monsters and so on, but now the young man could only use the void barrier. In the fire attribute, the fire barrier cannot withstand the attacks of the earth. The barriers of the holy and cursed attribute cannot withstand the attack of the same attribute. However, the void barrier is capable of reflecting any attribute. This is a unique attribute that is unique to the demon lord. Turning to our hero after all the explanations, the dragon suggested now to feel the magical power because it is a vital energy subordinated to the will. If the young man focuses, he will be able to use it the way he wants. The next moment, our hero started trying to follow the instructions that the dragon had given him earlier in order to use his power. 
The next moment, our hero decided to use the barrier as the dragon had taught him, and despite his energy, the young man realized that nothing was working out for him, which made the young man very angry and upset. The dragon tried to cheer up our hero and asked him not to just think, but to concentrate and consider magic a part of himself. After listening to his advice, our hero decided to concentrate again and use the barrier. The next moment, some kind of energy enveloped him and the dragon, looking at the young man, realized that he had succeeded. Now our hero understood how it was done, and he thought that now he was beginning to understand how the whole system works in principle. The dragon was shouting that the enemy was already attacking, and he had to take them on himself. The young man will have to cope with the rest on his own. The next moment, small dragons flew up to the dragon, which attacked it, and the dragon began to resist them. Realizing that nothing was working out for him, the dragon had to use not only his fire-breathing flames, but also his sharp claws, attacking his opponents. A girl was sitting on one of the dragons, using thunder fangs, she raised her sword high in the air and decided to attack the dragon. Our hero saw that his defender was being attacked and decided to use the barrier. The next moment, when the girl decided to attack the dragon, she did not succeed. The captain, watching this battle, saw that everything was in vain and everyone was silently just watching the situation. And the dragon, seeing the young man, thought about what an ideal barrier the demon lord had made. The girl who sat on the dragon earlier could not believe her eyes that her attack was repelled, as well as the captain, who saw that the attack was repelled, he was trying to figure out what happened. Then the rest of the military rushed to Master Lior, reporting to him. Reporting that the magic meters had detected void magic. It was the void barrier that had just saved the ice dragon. The commander, looking at the situation that unfolded in front of him, tried to understand what was happening here at all. One of the knights reported that in addition to the ice dragon, there is also a demon lord on the mountain peak. After all, it wasn't some imposter, the real demon lord was here, the captain was informed, and the captain was trying to figure out what the demon lord was doing here. The knights explained that they had discovered a creature that they thought was a newborn demon lord. And the commander understood that due to unforeseen circumstances, they should act more according to plan F. All staff needed to get to work on it immediately. It was reported here that three members of the Fifth Order of the Ground Troops were supposed to target the Demon Lord, who, as they assumed, was only born because there is no dungeon. The troops were given permission to use special weapons to defeat the Ice Dragon King. The newborn Demon Lord was the weakest right now, and they would definitely use this opportunity to defeat him, shouted the captain, commanding his troops. After hearing everything that their enemy was the Demon Lord, everyone had to go ahead. Having regrouped the formation, the dragons and the girl who sat on them informed everyone to go forward to this young man. At this moment, our hero watched as a horde of dragons and humans began to march on them again, realizing that an attack would follow. Our hero heard that the knights decided to regroup. At this moment, our hero decided to ask what was going on about the demon lord, because next time they will definitely not be well. The dragon said that he understood that this was our hero's barrier, because he can only defend himself by accumulating energy, and the young man literally saved his life. He then explained that they had low-ranking dragons with them. They used the energy of the dragon bane to attack. The young man was wondering if the dragon could handle 20 airships and 3 dragons at the same time. The dragon of course did not know this. These people were much stronger this time. It would be much easier if the demon lord could kill them himself. Our hero, hearing this, could not concentrate because he understood that they were still people and he had never killed anyone in his life. Then the dragon realized that the young man was not ready for this yet. Therefore, he reported that he would deal with those in the sky, and the young man would deal with those on earth. Hoshi had no choice but to agree with the dragon. But the next moment our hero realized that he might not be able to cope and asked to wait for the dragon, which was already flying away from him. The same one did not understand if our hero could not even protect himself. The next moment, the dragon suggested that people attack because he was going to deal with them. The dragon introduced himself as the Crystal King of the Ice Dragons, informing them that the name of the killer should be imprinted in their memory. The dragon was very self-confident. The girl who went to the front sitting on the dragon informed people about it. She added that only he would be killed here. In front of him were Angeli Greyer, 7th place in the 5th Order. Julia Alcoglius, second in the fifth order, and fifth place in the fifth order, Knight Henry Moratorio. So they went forward to their opponent, introducing themselves to him before his death. But the dragon decided that he could also attack his opponents by accumulating flames in his mouth. Attacking them, he realized that maybe he had a chance. 
The next moment I saw that the dragons were attacking and our dragon saw the sword that the girl had. At that moment Angelica wondered if the dragon king wasn't afraid that they might kill him. Our dragon screamed that didn't she know that a lot of dragons had been killed by this sword. The girl also reported that it was the Sword of Chaos, also known as the Dragon Slayer Sword. At that moment, she held it in her hand, ready to attack the dragon and offered him death. The next moment, they grouped together and used Triple Storm Magic, Shinmei to attack the dragon that was right in front of them. The dragon, seeing this attack, prepared for death, but the next moment our hero stood in front of him, protecting the dragon with his barrier. When people thought they had already won, at that moment the girls realized that everything was not over yet. They saw the demon lord completely block their attacks twice, looking at the light that appeared right in front of them. After all, it was a barrier of emptiness, it was only within his power, because in front of them was a real demon lord. The next moment our hero, addressing the girls on the dragons, wanted to ask them a few questions. Then they carefully decided to listen to him and asked what our hero wanted. The young man did not understand why they were attacking the ice peak. They were not harmed. At that moment, the guys started laughing, saying that the young man was saying something stupid. And then Julia asked if he was the Lord of Demons, he wanted to hear the answer. But the young man was very serious and asked the girl to answer this question. The next moment, she reported that this dragon's life was better than the last one. It belongs to them, the knightly kingdom of Argyle. They knew better how to use it than the unreasonable dragons. They were better equipped to use the dragon vein. The young man who was with the girls, who were also knights, reported that, besides what they said, all the evil in the world is created by demons. They had to get rid of them. Our hero, upon hearing this, understood that the demon lord was harmful to them, and he was glad that they recognized at least that. But he asked why the guys decided that they would be able to replace him as a nature conservator. At that moment, Julia was telling that what they were looking for was called the Dragon Vein only because of people. It was originally called, Hell on the Surface. There's no reason why they humans couldn't capture the vein, because humans are the most perfect species in the world. The dragon, addressing our hero, asked if the young man now understood what he was talking about, because this was humanity right in front of him. Our hero, hearing this, thought that he was just a fool. The demon lord was neutral, but it became clear to him now that he understood everything. At that moment, Julia offered our hero death. Upon hearing this, the dragon was surprised because he saw the attack she was going to use. He couldn't believe that people could use the energy from the dragon vein. At that moment, the girl used the chaos attribute Dragon Strike, attacking our heroes. The guy, noticing this, used a barrier against his attack on the dragon. The dragon, sensing this, asked our hero to be careful because it was an attribute of chaos. The miasma remains even if it could be blocked. This attack is much more powerful than the previous one. At that moment, our hero really felt it. Angelica screamed that they had used three poisonous dragon strikes and suggested the death of the demon lord. The guy who was with them reported that justice had to prevail and that our hero had to turn to ashes now. The next moment, our hero saw two more attacks coming at him from these guys. As a result, all three attacked the young man, which was completely unexpected. The next moment, the dragon was attacked along with our hero. The young man saw that the barrier stopped the blow, but missed the miasma and realized that he was getting very sick. At that moment, he saw how the Dragon King was attacked, trying to figure out what had happened to him, because he was bleeding all over. Julia, seeing this, thought about what remained only to finish with this dragon and gave the signal that the knights saw. The next moment, turning to Master Lior, the knights informed their commander that the time had come. He turned to Lady Reyna and asked if the Third Order had heard her, saying that they had received the final blow and were ready to attack. Our hero asked the dragon to stop, but he continued to talk about the smoke of the miasma of chaos and asked the young man to be careful, because it is already coming, their deadliest weapon. And at that moment, the commander gave the order for people to release fire. It was supposed to be the combined fire and wind magic, red lotus fire cannon, that went on the attack. It is believed that these four attributes are special attributes and are determined by innate talent, speaking of the holy attribute, the attribute of curses, the spiritual attribute, and the attribute of emptiness. The holy attribute controls healing and purification. The curse attribute controls poison and miasma. The spiritual attribute affects fighting techniques and mental states, and the void attribute is a special attribute of the demon lord. He is able to create dungeons and demons. The strongest attributes are the attribute of law, standing at the top among all attributes, the attribute of life, chaos, time and space. Three of the five orders attacked with their strongest chaos attribute. 
However, their attack was repelled by the Void Barrier. The Demon Lord was too dangerous, the commander thought about it and how much it annoyed him because they had to finish him off here. The Third Order on his command should not have given them any chance to counterattack. They had to destroy the barrier with a series of attacks from the Red Lotus Fire Cannon. The commander asked to continue magical attacks on his opponents. At this moment, our hero was trying to repel these very attacks using his barrier. The dragon encouraged the young man, because he saw how our hero grew up before his eyes, using an excellent, as it seemed to him, ideal barrier. The young man was glad that the dragon was encouraging him, but it was not so easy. At this moment, the commander was saying that he thought the shot of the Red Lotus was blocked by a barrier, so he commanded Rihanna to attack now and create a magic circle to increase the power. Twenty soldiers at the same time in a circle, and the power of the cannon increased. At that moment, they used enhanced fire and wind magic, using the dragon cannon of wind and fire, attacking our heroes with all their might. Our hero, seeing this attack, understood that it was impossible to repel him, and even if he could repel, then a new attack would immediately follow, which he might no longer be able to prevent. Therefore, the ice dragon, addressing the demon lord, reported that the young man would not be able to withstand this attack and had to run away, because he understood this perfectly well. But it was too late, and our hero was attacked. Screaming in pain, he tried to withstand this attack that came crashing down on him. The next moment there was silence and everyone was trying to figure out what was going on because there was a terrible explosion and after it only the fog was visible. The commander, looking down from above, also saw only fog and tried to figure out what was there. At that moment, they saw a shining black hole and the commander was happy thinking that they must have killed the demon lord, but the presence of demons persisted. As Lior understood so far, it turned out that the young man was alive. The commander realized that the demon lord was inside the hole after the shot he had seen recently. Listening to the commander's order, everyone understood that it was necessary to finish him off with their swords. 5. The order was supposed to capture the dragon king, if it was difficult to catch him, it was necessary to eliminate him. The dragon king had to recover a certain amount of strength, so it was necessary to prepare for a counterattack. At that moment, the king was carefully watching the little dragons that were flying straight towards him and informed him that he would not die just like that, because he would take them with him. Everyone felt the tremendous energy, the commander did not understand what had happened, and the knights reported to him that the Dragon King's counterattack had been activated. He took up a defensive position and managed to withstand the blow. Upon hearing this, the commander understood that it was not to their advantage, because it was a damn lizard that was still trying to stand up. The Dragon King was going to protect our hero. The next moment, the young man was trying to get out of the hole that had formed after the impact. Getting out on him, his clothes were torn. The young man understood that he could barely stand it. The barriers were broken, if he hadn't covered himself with an additional barrier, he would have been dead by now and realized that he had damn little strength left. The next moment, the thought flashed through his mind that maybe he could just hide in this hole and everything should have worked out. But he understood that these were still dreams, and the only thing left for him was to kill people himself, so our hero had to go on the attack. Looking out of the hole, he saw that the Demon King was being attacked and thought that it was necessary to help him, because this one had lost all his allies. Alone, he found himself in such a difficult situation, the young man did not know at all what to do. At this moment, while he was thinking, he saw that enemies were approaching him. Hoshi tried to figure out how many of them there were, looking at the knights who came right at him and realized that how many moves forward all these people had thought out. The young man understood that they were already close and were ready to attack. At that moment, the knights felt something. They saw these things while looking at the black blurry bubbles that came from the cave where the demon lord they had attacked earlier should have been. Many knights wondered what kind of black bubbles they were, and someone did not know, saying that they might have been miasma, but then realized that they were wrong. They weren't miasma at all, they were demons, so everyone had to be careful. They overlap each other so they didn't know the exact number, but there should be at least a hundred. This should have been quickly reported to Master Rial. An unknown attack did they really think that the demon lord could have already mastered a new spell. At that moment, the commander was informed that he had an urgent message from the First Order, an urgent message from the commander. The commander informed Mr. Corlior that there were demons besides the demon lord. They didn't know their essence and were trying to figure out what needed to be done with them. The commander did not expect this at all, so he asked for the equipment to be prepared, he would immediately identify it. The commander realized that he had made a mistake, he had to learn the entire catalog of demons. 
Addressing Mr. Kadir Gill, he informed him that he was not going to test the demons until they found out what it was, they would have to be extremely careful. Upon hearing the order, the knights reported that it was the commander-in-chief's order to deal with the demons, they had to deal with themselves. They had to surround them, and it had to be something new, because they had never seen such demons before. The captain went forward and the next moment, after cutting one of the demons, he realized that it happened very easily. There was no reaction either, they were too weak. At that moment, the demon dissolved right in front of him, and the knight rejoiced thinking that the commander had defeated the demon and that they would follow him. Chanting the commander's name, the knights reported that he was the hope of all mankind and that they had to go ahead and show them their strength. One order had to get everything in place, the commander commanded and begin the attack. After that, he commanded them to go forward, but looking at the demons, which they could easily cut, he thought that something was wrong here. Our hero at that moment, using these balls, thought that this was his only way out. Shortly before the order's arrival, as he retreated deeper into the cave, he thought to himself that the current formation was a defensive position without pawns, supposed to be defensive, it was only good for defense. A certain line of defense, but the most important figure of the whole battle. In other words, the Dragon King was dying, and he needed to understand how to strengthen the line of defense. If they had no pawns left, then he had never created dungeons and demons before, but he thought that they had come a long way, and the place where he came was the most suitable. The Dragon King told him that if he concentrated, the Demon Lord's abilities would manifest themselves. Our hero thought that he had no other choice, except to sit down and try. The next moment, a core appeared in front of our hero. He thought that this was probably the magic core that he had been told about. The next moment, he decided to connect it to the Dragon Vein, and the young man felt it bubbling with energy. And then he saw the interface. There must be a weak result of the magic core. The magic power has been restored, the barrier level and the dungeon map will be in front of our hero. Looking at the data, he thought about the fact that he did not want to use it. First of all, he needed the mass production of minions and decided to make the creation of monsters. Initial combat experience, initial intelligence, initial physical characteristics, appearance, all these settings sounded right in front of our hero. Looking at them, he thought that there were a lot of them. Two strong minions are useless if produced in small quantities, and then he saw the special ability settings, thinking that maybe there might be something worthwhile here. Our hero wanted henchmen with great combat experience, but with unlimited numbers and growth rates. If they are all endowed with a special ability of compatible thinking and massively produced experiences will be shared and accumulated between them. New minions, even if they were just born, will immediately gain the experience of their predecessors and they will quickly become stronger. This is a collective mind superior to human thinking. This is exactly what our hero created. The knights at this moment were trying to deal with his creatures, saying that these opponents were slowly moving and dying with one hit. It was necessary to follow the commander, and victory would be for them, the knights thought. Someone shouted for these opponents to be left to the newcomers, they were so weak that even the most inexperienced of their soldiers could handle it. The commander shouted to everyone that they had to advance sooner or later, the maze would not be able to produce them. The next moment, I'm dealing with new ones, suddenly something appeared in front of the knight that attacked him. The commander was trying to figure out what it was the next moment, all these little demons started attacking the knights. The knights, looking at these recently seemingly small balls, saw how they began to change and tried to understand what was happening to them. In the next moment, these balls began to quickly deal with the knights that were right in front of them. The knights couldn't believe that in such a short period of time, these balls had become stronger. In the next moment, they dealt with almost everyone. The deputy head of the First Order, Alier Brin, did not understand what was happening. The next moment, he commanded everyone that they had to leave and take away the seriously wounded. It was necessary to contact the commander-in-chief. The next moment, she shouted at the commander to stop, but he was attacking his opponents again. They had to continue their way with their corpses. Looking at this, the deputy head one thought about how wonderful the commander was, because he was able to destroy everyone. But the commander understood that it wasn't that simple, because these demons were definitely getting stronger with each kill. Looking at the Ice Dragon King, they realized that they couldn't support Lord Julius yet. Then they will have to give the order to retreat. The next moment, the captain commanded everyone to be ready to retreat. As soon as the Lord gave the go-ahead, they had to retreat and take the lead in this. The captain of the commander, looking at the enemy, realized that they were only getting stronger and realized that he no longer understood anything and asked to project an image. The next moment, he saw in front of him a picture that the soldiers had seen recently, looking at the black balls that were killing everyone. 
The Lord realized that it was a new species, a completely new species, and it was getting stronger with each death. The Lord understood that if this continued, they would be wiped off the face of the earth, so it was necessary to allow a retreat, the commander shouted to him. The Lord understood that so many lives had been lost because of his mistake. The next moment, he shouted that the First Order should have retreated and returned to the airship. The Demon King will be dealt with by the Fifth Order. The deputy said that the order to retreat had been given. The order was to return to the airship. The commander agreed and informed them to retreat because their lives were above all else. A lair is responsible for the withdrawal. At that moment, the commander was fighting and trying to let his soldiers retreat. Alaire wished good luck to his commander and informed him that priority was given to the seriously wounded. They should not be panicking, their airship was almost there. At that moment, he heard a strange sound. The soldiers retreated and the demons began to attack. Alaire thought that these demons were taking them in a pincer grip, he had to detain the demons while the commander was fighting. They had to retreat to the airship, commanded by the knights. The next moment, he was trying to fight these demons, but then suddenly he heard a terrible sound. Turning back, he saw our hero, who was holding a sword in his hand, he climbed out of the cave and was able to fly high up, destroying the airship that had recently stood behind the deputy's back. And then he looked down at his opponents. After everyone saw the huge explosion, they realized that the airship had been blown up. But at that moment, our hero saw that another airship was coming right up to them, as was the knight, who was looking in the same direction. At that moment our hero, grabbing the Sword of the Abyss, which he held in his hands, sent it straight into the airship that was flying up to the wounded knights at that moment. Alaire shouted for our hero to stop and asked him not to do it. But the next moment, ignoring the screams, the young man broke the airship apart, leaving only splinters from it. Alaire realized that the young man was able to do it with one blow. Alaire was madly angry for not letting the wounded soldiers leave. Our hero, while in the air, thought that there was very little left. At that moment, he continued to hold his sword, and the next moment, when he saw that the airships were hurrying right towards him, he thought that they would not just leave here. The airships were about to fly away, at that moment our hero used a barrier. Alaire noticed that the snow had stopped, the sky seemed to be shrouded in something and probably it was the magic of the demon lord. Then the knights came to him, informing him that it was the barrier of the demon lord, and he blocked the whole sky, they could not continue to fly on the airship. Alaire of course was determined to defeat the demon lord, telling the knights to continue landing. Addressing his squad, Alaire asked if they were ready to go with him, but warned that it could be a one-way ticket. Everyone agreed with their commander and were ready to attack the demon lord. Alaire was sure that the five of them would not destroy him, so the rest had to fight off his predecessors and they would deal with the main enemy. The demons of the abyss, invented and created by Hoshi, were a masterpiece in the blink of an eye, the young man thought. Looking at the white slopes of the sacred mountain that turned blood red. The parameters were distributed according to the growth rate and the experience and knowledge accumulated by all through the collective mind. Dark matter is a material from which anything could be created. It was a wonderful move to strike back after the hero was cornered, and the young man thought that he was delighted. It was a massacre he wanted to avoid, but now he was determined to survive. Therefore, raising his sword over his head, the young man shouted and thought to himself that these soldiers would not leave him alive. The next moment there was an explosion. Addressing Lord Lior, the knight who stood behind him reported that if they did not do this, then one order would die. At that moment, their airship was looking down on what was happening with the First Order, where our hero was fighting. Lior of course knew all this. The Dragon Flame Cannon would undoubtedly be able to erase the barrier, but if they weren't careful, the Knights of the First Order inside would be wiped off the face of the Earth. The Dragon King stubbornly transforms vital energy into magical power and unleashes snowstorms over and over again. Why couldn't the Ice Dragon just give up once and for all, Lior wondered, looking at the giant dragon. One Demon Lord who appeared in 200 years. Lior did not think that the First Order could lose so much. He thought that it was necessary to send the strongest royal guards, the pride of their people to win, that's when the real battle would begin. The Dragon King can be limited by magic to three orders, and then all three knights of the royal guard will work together, and it will be easier to kill the Demon King alone. The unexpected appearance of the Demon Lord put them at a dead end, Lior thought, remembering everything that happened recently. But he was sure that this was not the end. They will kill him before he reaches his full potential. At that moment, addressing Julia Sama, Lior reported that everyone from the Fifth Order had to move to the Void Dome of the Demon Lord. The young demons created a new kind of demons in their cave and dozens of them roamed around. 
Julia said that they would sort it out later. The dragon, looking at the ships flying away from him, thought that they were probably heading for the Lord and seemed to expect that there would be a heated battle. 3. The order of Lord Reyna had to continue to repel the attacks of the Dragon King. The Dragon King's attacks would not stop until his life force ran out, everyone understood. Lord Sigil one of the order was also supposed to attack the Demon Lord inside the barrier. Now the Demon Lord had no way out as Lior decided all he had left was a pathetic barrier and a couple of minions. There are two elite orders inside the barrier, and the Royal Guard and three knights of the Fifth Order appeared outside the barrier. A new kind of demons is tearing the elites apart, the Dragon King has been stopped by the Third Order, and now it remains only to deal with the Demon Lord, because his turn has come. At that moment, everyone was attacking the demons that our hero had created. The knights were fighting with them, and at this moment Alaire, who was walking forward, thought that the Demon Lord was in the upper airspace of the ship, they were using magic to knock him to the ground. Sitting on a dragon, Julia used chaos magic and a poisonous dragon strike, attacking opponents right in front of her, our hero heard an explosion. Turning around, he thought that these were the very opponents he had been waiting for. The explosion was directed against the barrier that our hero had set up. But the next moment, when Julia looked at it, she realized that the barrier had not been destroyed, another one appeared behind it. It turned out that it looked like it was a double barrier, but they had to attack it until they broke it. Using the blows of chaos, Julia began to attack the barrier built by our hero again. The next moment when it split, they realized that this barrier was not as simple as they thought, because another one appeared behind it. But then they realized that this was not quite the case because it looks like a new barrier is being formed from the burning end of the old barrier. Julia, looking at our hero, wished that the vile demon lord would remove the barrier. The young man, looking at her, and as if reading her thoughts, thought that there was another barrier that should have delayed them because he would not allow them to interfere with his fight. The next moment, our hero suggested that they stay outside the barrier and watch the performance that he was going to arrange. Julia considered the Demon Lord to be a terrible person, and the next moment our hero went on the attack. Julia also went on the attack wanting to break the barrier. At that moment, our hero was breaking the airships that were inside this barrier. At that moment, Alaire asked to shoot at the Demon Lord from where they were now. He was busy with the outer barrier, and since the Demon Lord was weak in close combat, they had a chance if they could knock him down. Our hero saw the army coming up from below and thought about what needed to be done. At that moment, a demon appeared in front of him, whom he had created quite recently, and, addressing him, commanded them to attack a guy who looked like the captain from all sides at once and be sure to take him alive. The next moment, when Alaire commanded his squad, a friend attacked him from the demon balls that had attacked all the other knights before. The young man was wounded, and the next moment, when he was about to retreat, his knights came to his aid, protecting the commanders from all sides. The young man was very happy about this and of course considered himself their debtor. The knights rushed to defend their deputy and they tried to fight off the onslaught of demons that attacked him. They asked the deputy to heal his wounds as soon as possible and offered him to drink medicine. The next moment, when the young man drank the medicine, he seemed to begin to shine, as our hero noticed. Hoshi saw that the wound on his leg that his demons had made had healed. The young man was very surprised by this and could not believe that he perked up in an instant and was able to move calmly. At that moment, he saw Alaire walking forward and calling his brave knights along with him. According to him, the demon lord should not have gone further. Our hero of course expected that they had a potion and the like, but in the end it was another world. Well he was a demon lord, so he shouldn't be surprised by this. At that moment, Alaire rushed at the demon lord and the young man saw that he and his demons could not restrain this guy. Even the four spawn of the abyss couldn't handle him. The guy started shouting that everyone should destroy the demon lord, and our hero wanted all his demons to destroy all the knights and suggested that they also absorb more of their experience. The knights began to use their weapons, who had a flash, who had a thunderbolt, and someone had stone bullets and icy rain. Our hero was thinking that his knights had strong magic, looking at what they could do. At that moment, his demons were attacking again, but they couldn't do anything, because the knights countered with his lunge. The next moment, Alaire was shouting for the Demon Lord to get ready and use a lightning charge. It was a compound magic that mixed the attributes of flame and explosion, it was his trump card with which he could attack his opponent. Our hero saw that the young man's attack was moving towards him and prepared for what would await him next. The next moment, Alaire commanded the Demon Lord to die, but the young man thought it was useless. The spawn of the abyss had already finished and the magic was ready. 
The young man, seeing this one, thought that it was simply impossible, looking at our hero. The demon lord had enough magical energy, so it was time to end this. The next moment, using the creation of demons, he again directed them to attack his opponents. The knights, seeing this, realized that there were a lot of demons, and our hero believed that these people simply underestimated the demon lord. The lord who is missing with a sword, the lord who cannot be touched with magic, the lord of demons who could kill them all, Alaire understood, looking at our hero. At that moment, our hero shouted for them to focus on their commander, and the knights, hearing this, rushed to defend their deputy. When they saw the demons, they realized that there were too many of them, and they would not hold him back. The next moment, the demons tore apart his companions as well. Seeing this, Alaire could not believe it and wanted to attack with tears in his eyes, but it was too late because the demons pierced the young man and his vital organs, so he simply could not survive it. The next moment, he decided to use a lightning charge. Feeling his attack, our hero thought about how stubborn this guy was, and he was very surprised that the young man could cast a spell even when he was dying. At that moment, he saw an attack that went straight up the mountain, and an avalanche swept down the mountain. But our hero tried to resist her. He thought about the fact that his magic was directed at the snowy mountain, and suddenly the snowy mountain exploded, was it a freatic explosion? But it was unlikely, most likely the groundwater in the mountain was instantly evaporated by the power of his magic and the pressure blew the mountain apart. The young man understood that the continuous barrier was vulnerable to physical attacks from the inside, but from the outside it could be destroyed, which Alaire did, who launched his last attack. At that moment, Julia thought that she finally had a chance, looking at our hero through the destroyed barrier. At that moment, all the knights saw how many losses the First Order had, despite how fierce this battle was, and they all didn't want to let that happen anymore. They had to defeat this guy with their own hands. At this moment, they were informing the Demon Lord that they had finally reached him. One of the Order, with tears in his eyes, looking at our hero, could not understand how he dared to do this, saying that he killed his people just like pigs. The Demon Lord had to pay for this. At that moment, they were all looking at Alaire, who was sitting next to his dead comrades. Everyone was ready to confront our hero, especially for the death of their comrades. Alaire, sitting next to his comrades, thought about the fact that his end had come, turning his words to the Demon Lord. Our hero understood that it was bad, he was surrounded from all sides. Looking at his partner, he realized that the Dragon King was no longer a threat, and he couldn't fight these people. Up close, they were much stronger than him, even the creatures of the Abyss couldn't compare to them. Then he just had to keep running away, and at that moment our hero used teleportation. Seeing that he used instant teleportation, everyone was very surprised, and the young man thought that if he fought competently, he would definitely be able to win. At that moment, he used the barrier again, because he needed more time to perfect it. He realized that he hadn't finished yet, and the next moment the young man was thinking about how he needed to get out of here. That's the only thing left for him to think about. Then he realized that he was being attacked right from below and breaking down the barriers, someone jumped right at our hero, saying that he would not leave here alive. Our hero did not expect that his opponent would be able to destroy the barrier with one blow. But at that moment, when our hero saw his opponent from behind, he wanted to use teleportation. Then suddenly he wondered how his opponent had such confidence, realizing that something was wrong here. Sigil, seeing that our hero remained in place, was very surprised that the Demon Lord did not want to teleport. But he reported that it was the right move, because he would not succeed. After all, his sword was inhabited by an attribute of space and time, and he would cut it when transferring, he reported, starting to attack our hero. Our hero thought about what it was, dodging his attacks very badly, the young man realized that the attribute of space and time was right in front of him. Looking at the sword and trying to figure out what kind of sword it was, but the next moment our hero realized that his teleport was completely independent of the attribute. The next moment, the sigil was on the young man again, informing him that the end of the demon lord had come. Our hero at this moment used the transfer to the maze. Sigil was very surprised that the transfer of our hero is not spatio-temporal as he later guessed, at that moment he was attacked by demons. Sigil of course thought that the young man was a weakling, since he continued to run away from him. Our hero understood that it was unfair, but he had no other choice. At that moment, he wondered if he had had time to observe this opponent. When he was distracted by our hero, there was a triple dragon strike. The guy shouted that the demon lord would not escape, and his companions informed the young man to die, wishing him this with all their hearts. At that moment, seeing that an attack was flying at him, our hero managed to group up and use the barrier. 
but then the next attacks were directed at him like a dragon that fired at him. The next one was a blast with the wind and Julia commanded them not to stop and attack the demon lord with all their means. Everyone had to concentrate and follow the signs. It was time to finish off their opponents. At that moment, the dragon was watching our hero closely. He thought about the lord, but he no longer had the strength, and he thought that his time had finally come. Then Julia, seeing that the dragon had fallen, thought that even the dragon king seemed to have run out of steam. But at that moment, when she was distracted, our hero thought that the guys were too careless and he wanted to make them regret it. The next moment, as he raised his sword, he used the abyss sword to attack his opponents, informing them that it was his turn now. Our hero's attack was so powerful that he was able to bomb the ships that were nearby using his sword. He smashed every airship and it exploded. Looking at this, the guys couldn't believe their eyes, it was the 19th ship. At that moment, they were watching their comrades die. Julia, seeing that the knights continued to fall from the ship, asked Henry and Julius, saying that she had to save these people. At that moment, flying up to one of the guys, she was able to grab onto him. She grabbed the knight of course, but he had problems with his arm. At that moment, the girl noticed that all the other knights were still falling too, and that she couldn't catch them all in time, so she sent the dragons there. The dragons and other guys went to help the others, trying to catch the knights who were falling from the sky. Ratsori fell on the dragons, grabbing their tail, their body, so as not to fall on the ice and on the ground. At that moment, one of the girls used a wind curtain to try to catch all the other knights that they couldn't catch with the help of the dragons. Her partners helped. Using the wind curtain, the knights who were caught using it suddenly found themselves in the air, trying to understand what was happening to them. They were all very scared that they were suspended, and then they were very carefully placed on the ground. They understood that it was Mr. Julius who was able to save them and were very grateful to him. But the next moment, when the knights were thinking that they had been saved, our hero overtook them, and the next moment it was all over. Seeing this, Julia realized that she couldn't figure out where the Demon King was because the attack was very fast. But our hero reported that it was already very late, using the castle of the Demon Lord, Crystal Palace, our hero went on the attack. At that moment, the instruments on the main ship went wild and everyone was trying to figure out what was going on. The device of magical observation recorded just abnormal fluctuations in magical power, informing Mr. Kanlior that the ambient temperature is rapidly decreasing. The knights reported that it looked like large-scale magic was being activated near the top of the mountain. Lior wondered what was going on at all. At that moment, he realized that even the 19th ship had been damaged. The damage was too great, so it was necessary to order everyone to retreat, those who could should hurry to help the Third Order. It was also necessary to bring back Lord Sigil, he has no way to fly away, but they need as many survivors as possible. 5. The Order must also retreat as soon as possible. The survivors of the First Order had to retreat too, as soon as possible, commanded by Lior. It was a message to all units to be on the alert and monitor the movements of the Demon Lord and retreat as soon as possible. The knights realized that it was too cold and the temperature dropped even more. They just couldn't retreat and needed to use more heat magic to keep warm. After all, the priority now was heat, it was also necessary to turn off the lighting and increase the heat output. The commander could not accept this and the knights tried to restrain him, saying that they had been told that they needed to retreat. But the commander couldn't come to his senses in any way, the only thing he wanted was to find the demon lord. With tears in his eyes, he was ready to go into battle, but the knights tried to hold him back, telling him that they had orders. He couldn't use his dragon, he couldn't show his full strength, and even his deputy was killed in battle. The commander must have been so upset that he wanted to commit suicide, thought the knight who was detaining him. At that moment, the commander realized that everything was in vain. Julia, who was flying on a dragon, thought about how cold the air was, because if she didn't have magic and heat, the girl would freeze to death. At that moment, her friend informed them that they needed to hurry, turning to the deputy. The girl knew this when telling Henry, and then, turning to Ange, she asked if she could walk. The girl said that she would be fine, but the knights they saved might not be able to stand it. At that moment, one of the airships flew by and Lior shouted that it was necessary to activate the magic core to the maximum and continue the retreat. The knights informed Master Lior that not everyone had come yet. He reported that this was an unforeseen circumstance. In the worst case, they should have brought at least information. Turning to one of the knights, who was holding a magic device in his hands, he was interested in whether they confirmed the appearance of the demon lord. He reported that it was so, the meter confirmed it. At that moment, our hero was looking at his opponents in the air. 
Lior looked at him and was filled with rage towards this young man who was in the air right in front of him. Looking after the departing airships, the young man thought that they were finally retreating. At this moment, he was standing not far from his dragon. The same one, being wounded, lay behind him. The young man asked if he was okay. The dragon reported that this was not entirely true. The young man realized that he did not have magic and asked if the dragon had used life energy, saying that if this was the case, then he could die. But the dragon informed our hero that he was not going to die just like that. At that moment, the young man asked if the dragon could not cope with this with the help of a dragon vein. And the dragon reported that he couldn't do it because he was mortally wounded. Our hero was very sorry, and the dragon, trying to look at the young man, reported that it was not his fault. It was his weakness and carelessness, and then he reported that he would rise again, and our hero had to take his remains and use them for good. Our hero agreed to this because that's all he had to do. The next moment, the dragon began to fall into the abyss. This shouldn't have been a problem, our hero thought. The stars have come together this time for the sake of the demon lord, and the dragon spirits can return to the star state, and our hero should have remained in charge. These were the thoughts of the dragon as he fell into the abyss, dragging knights and the wounded with him. After the dragon fell next to the cold castle that our hero conjured. The next moment, the young man descended after him and using his magic began to take away the body of the dragon king. The young man reported that he would do his will. The abyss consists of dark matter from which it can be created, it can be destroyed. Therefore, our hero used the body of the demon king and conducted an analysis, thinking about whether he would succeed. But soon the young man realized that apparently not, so he used the transfer to the dungeon. The next moment, our hero found himself in his palace. And it was almost exactly as he had imagined. It looks like everything will work underground. At that moment, he sat down on his chair, placing the magic core in front of him. The magic core was further underground, and the rest of the crystal palace, what happened to it, the young man wondered. The crystal palace of the demon lord rises above the top of the mountain, the underground dungeon is the whole mountain. The entrance, followed by the dungeon, is at the foot. This is a sure way to restore the encroaching hordes. Our hero thought about the fact that this palace was already pretty good, but over time he decided that he would only improve it. Looking out of the window of his castle, our hero thought that at last his opponents were retreating. Of course it was hard, there were no problems with the infantry however, their commanders were terrible splinters. Remembering the faces of the people he fought, our hero recently thought. But in any case, the young man hoped that they would not return soon. The ships retreated, and after that, the assembled meeting, all informed Lior that they had to take revenge. Only the flagship and twenty ships were able to retreat. Lior reported that it was impossible to act on emotions. It was the secret art of the demon lord to change the terrain and create mazes. But Lior had never heard of such a thing. He had thought of everything from the very beginning, whether he was thinking to himself, or whether he was just very lucky. The Lord himself did not have great combat abilities, the reason for the defeat of the knights and the army were mysterious demons with unknown abilities, which our hero used. Lior thought that if they had at least one sample, they could figure out what to do with it in the future. The next moment Lior ordered the knight to be contacted by the heads of the orders because he needed to hear their opinion. The strategic meeting room. The commanders of the fifth order came to him. At that moment, everyone asked what was going on about the 20th ship, and Commander Sigil, Commander Rihanna also arrived here. They were apologizing for their appearance because they had heard that it was urgent, Lord Sigil reported. Lior said that everything was fine and apologized for calling them together so urgently. Rihanna understood that all this blood belonged to the soldiers of the First Order, looking at Sigil, who was sitting in his armor without even having time to clean it. Lior of course reported that they could not have expected this. As for this demon lord, they needed information about everyone who had fought with him. Therefore, I turned to Rihanna, he asked first of all to describe the lord from a magical and technical point of view. At first, the young man fought mediocre, but in the middle of the battle, his abilities increased dramatically. His magical abilities were high and special barriers blocked magic. Alaire also reported that the demon lord does not take damage from magic. Lior thought to himself that maybe the demon lord has the ability to dispel magic. Then he asked a question about demons, telling Sigil son that as far as he understood, he was the only one who fought these demons directly. At first, Sigil reported that they were very weak, they could be easily killed, one by one. But after they killed a dozen, these demons began to change, they became as hard as steel and began to grow spikes as sharp as spears. Then did he think that perhaps the young man has the ability to create terrifying monsters, can even block the magic of Lady Rihanna. 
He looks like the legendary demon lord who lived a long time ago. Everyone thought that Lior was probably talking about the dead lord from fairy tales and asked him not to joke like that when addressing Mr. Liork. But then suddenly someone said that there was something else. The guy said right before the fight that he wanted to ask them about something. Perhaps it was part of his clever information gathering, whether he was a genius demon lord after all, no one knew. But the young man was definitely saying something that he would not harm them, that there was no need to attack him. Only our hero reported something like that. Everyone who heard Julius's words reported that he was right, and it was hard to believe that this was the Lord of Demons who had been freed from the shackles of the seal. If this was true, then the demon lord held a grudge, he would attack without warning, Lior thought. He informed them that they would have to reconsider their plans, they had to prepare for the victory over the demon lord thoroughly. If the enemy is the demon lord, then this time they had to create countermeasures against his demons, saying that everything should have worked out. All the commanders of the orders were ready to listen attentively to Lior. Lior was going to take revenge on the demon lord for the defeat in which more than 4,000 soldiers died. The next time was supposed to be the last for the demon lord. Three months later, everything was shining in the ice palace and looking at the glitter, everyone thought that they did not like these annoying crystals. These were the people who traveled through this palace. One turned to the other and said that this type would suffer and make a map. After all, the royal family is offering an incredible amount for this case. It was money that neither of them could earn in a lifetime. All this is done because the army is fleeing from the demon lord. Measuring the cave, one of the people said, and also thanks to this demon lord, they have a chance to earn a lot of money. At this moment, they were studying his attentive palace. One of them reported that since no demons appeared anyway, was it unusual for the maze? They also thought that in the end it was good because they had fewer problems with it. They had heard that demons were capable of dealing with a knight easily, and they did not want to fight them, especially in a dimly lit place like this. At that moment, as they moved through the castle, they thought that the passage was branching again. And if you weren't careful, you could just get lost easily. Looking at the castle, they thought that the demon lord who did it was really smart. The lord of demons is astral, they called him the starry sky. Then it seemed to him that this was an exaggeration, one of the people said. He didn't think it was such a big problem, it was worth being extremely careful. At this moment, our hero was carefully watching the arrivals at his palace, and after hearing the phrase that the Lord of Demons Astral means the starry sky, it was amazing for our hero that his name, given by someone in this world, means the same thing as the name that his mother gave him. The fortress city of Lindel, the main city, the main industry of which is the extraction of medicinal herbs. Our hero decided to give up the name Miyako Hoshi and become Hoshi Astral when he was named after the Lord of the Demons of the Astral. He would never have thought that he would be given such a name, he had to give his name correctly. Then he suddenly saw that there was a magic core here, looking at it carefully. They protect the city by using a magic core to form a zone where attributes don't work. Our hero, looking at this, thought that with his control ability, he could easily destroy this core. Due to the magical connection with his magic core, he could clearly hear the conversations in the maze. At this point, people reported that they were wondering if such a demon lord really existed. After all, they say that this was recorded in a document 200 years ago. Upon hearing this, our hero was just passing by a bookstore and decided that he had finally found it, so he decided to look there. Looking into the store, he was greeted by a girl who was putting away books. After looking at our hero, she was a little surprised and silently watched him go, because the young man passed by. She thought about how strange it was, she didn't think it was a thief, but nevertheless our hero looked very suspicious. At that moment, the young man took the book and read, talking about the binding technique, thinking that it was so perfect, as if from a printing house, and the ink was of the highest quality. Looking at the book, he thought that it was just amazing. When he started reading the book, he couldn't figure out how he knew the local language. But in any case, all he needs now is a world map, a history book, a book on logical technologies as well as books about the current situation in this country and neighboring ones. After buying books, our hero left the store. They said goodbye to him and asked him to come back to them again. Our hero was trying to carry a package with all the books and thinking that he had bought too many. He was in Lindel for the first time, but not only to gather information, but also to spend a lot of money. Lindel is a rich and peaceful place where the main industry is the production of medicinal herbs. The reason for the existence of such a peaceful place where demons roam the earth is very simple. This is due to territories where attributes created by the magic core do not work. Walking around the city, our hero thought that he was in the right place. 
At that moment, several ravens flew up to him and sat on his arm, the crows looked at him attentively. Our hero saw one of them and thought that he had grown up very much and asked if there was an opportunity to attack the city. And then he reported that the crows would have to fly for some time, working on collecting information. Addressing the abyss, he reported that this bird was of unusual color and therefore asked to try not to stand out. The birds obeyed his order and flew away. Our hero, after looking at this, thought that everything was fine. He reported that now it was necessary to start acting. At that moment, he was looking at the city and its bustle. The capital is Margriff. Sitting at the table, one of the people reported that he was going into battle. The demon lord would be hacked to pieces by his sword, the king reported. Everyone tried to stop him, because they lost about 5,000 knights in the fight against him. And then they informed the king that the castle of the demon king is also a very cold place, where even warming charms do not help. The only way there is through the great labyrinth from the lower peak. They sent surveyors to make a map of the great labyrinth. Then the king, inflamed, reported that he would go there and conquer it himself. People reported that it was impossible. The king was the only one they couldn't replace. Hearing these words, the king reflected that his advisor doubted his competence. But he reported that he did not dare to do this. He just couldn't let his king into such a dangerous place. Even if he was a king, he was no match for the demon lord. Upon hearing this, the king turned to the minister of the interior, Mikhail Brandon, and asked if he doubted his abilities. When he saw the king's face and looked at him, the advisor reported that of course he had no doubt about it. Then he asked the king to wait until the maze map was completed. Putting the book back in its place, the guy thought that it also turned out to be nothing. Stretching out because it was already late at night, taking off his glasses, he thought about how fast time was flying. Approaching the young gentleman, the maid asked if he was ready to go to bed. He, putting on his glasses again, informed that he would do it a little later. The maid also worried about him since then, he has only been living like this. The man reported that he had been dismissed from the post of chief of staff and placed under house arrest for six months, he did not need this routine. The maid also asked me to stop blaming myself. Mrs. Then Julius will acquit him in court. After all, the demon lord's barriers were perfect. Lior was not to blame, the girl screamed when they were also in court. But the young man reported that the public, and especially the families of the victims, would most likely blame him. The impoverished nobles, who are not so influential now, will take advantage of this opportunity. The maid did not let up, saying that no one could have guessed that the demon lord would appear and ask not to worry about the nobles. Addressing Mr. Pesar Lior, the girl thought that he had to take care of himself. The guy also reported that after all, the Lord of Demons Astral is quite unusual. None of the books mentioned the dungeon he had unexpectedly created. First of all, it is strange that there were two demon lords in the same period of time, the girl reported, and the guy confirmed that the world would not be destroyed by a single demon lord. But he had a bad feeling about this young man. The maid asked the master not to be afraid, saying that everything would be fine, turning to Mr. P. The Orr. Lior reported that she was right, given the strength of their country, he saw no reason why they should be afraid of this demon lord. Suddenly, after a short silence, he thought about the fact that the castle's dining room was not working at this hour. The maid, hearing his request, asked not to worry because she could cook food for him. After that, the guy reported that it was not worth doing because he most likely had to go to bed. Heading to his bed and lying in it, he had terrible nightmares. In them, he saw this cold mountain covered with snow and also a bloody sword as well as our hero who was laughing and had a completely terrible grin. Killing people, the guy was happy. There were corpses scattered around and terrible faces of people who looked at the guy from his dream. And the next moment, everything was on fire, where the bodies had been until recently. In his dream, people who suffered from this terrible battle merged with him, and looking at them, the guy saw the same Alaire who was killed by the hands of our hero. Addressing the commander-in-chief, Alaire looked at him, saying that it was Lior who destroyed him. Waking up from this terrible nightmare, the guy was screaming and covered in sweat. Hearing this cry, the maid burst into the room, trying to figure out if Lior was okay. At this moment, the young man was sitting in his bed, trying to understand what happened to him, being covered in sweat. Our hero at that moment was sitting on the bench and thinking that his eyes were getting tired when he read in dim light. He thought it would be better to destroy this country. Our hero had just finished reading Argyll's story and exhaling heavily, he thought about how tired he was. Physically he was fine, but mentally he was very tired. Books on philosophy, history, mythology, everything he was bad at in his previous world. But the other depressing thing is that this country is full of disgusting things. Looking at the world, our hero thought that she simply deserved to be destroyed. 
At that moment he was sitting looking at the children who were playing. Then he decided to take one of the books, thinking that it was a country of dragons, knights and doctors. The knightly kingdom of Argyle maintains its military power thanks to the dragon and is a country that has represented for a long time. Due to the proximity of their sacred mountain, valuable wild plants grow in abundance near the rivers that flow through the mountain. The development of pharmacology led to the discovery of anesthetic drugs and made surgical operations possible. The cold climate prevents the growth of microbes. The average life expectancy of the population was also very high thanks to urban planning, which prioritized cleanliness. The external enemy was a dragon, defeated by knights 800 years after the founding of the country. Already the 28th generation of the royal family continues to rule this powerful country. Naturally, surrounding countries constantly targeted them for capture. At the beginning, the fighting was fierce and only soldiers took part in it. 200 years after the founding of the kingdom, a turning point came further back. A demon lord appeared in the vicinity of the kingdom, creating monsters called dragoons. The dragoon, possessing incredible power, caused enormous damage to the entire country. Dragoon is a type of demon that is strengthened initially, but is unable to grow. They attacked in packs, and no one could resist them. It was difficult to cut through a dragon's dragon scales with a weapon designed against humans. The kingdom lost battle after battle, gradually becoming smaller, but then a hero appeared. This man, who later came to be called a hero, was a very good-natured soldier with no remarkable military service. He found a wounded dragoon who had quarreled with his comrades and healed him with herbs. Later this dragoon opened his heart to the man. As one they demonstrated their valor and became pioneers, they discovered new ways of fighting. The man did not kill the defeated dragoon and made him his companion. Thus, a hero who chose a dragoon as his friend called himself a knight. Together with his comrades, he defeated the demon lord who created the dragoons. Our hero, reading all this, thought that it was complete nonsense. Demons would never follow a person, it was brainwashing by the magic of illusion attributes. They are afraid that they did not challenge the demon lord to their ultimate essence creator. Fortunately, our hero has a mental connection with his abyss. Even if one of his minions was mind-controlled, he was only one of many so it shouldn't have worked. The hero used brainwashing. He was one of those who disrupted the life energy system through brainwashing. So they got the wyverns in the same way our hero thought. The reason he knew so little about them is that they fly in the sky, which makes them difficult to study. Our hero was even surprised that people were brainwashed by a real dragon. The Kingdom of Argyle Knights owns five dragon slaying swords, the most powerful type of weapon. They used them to destroy most of the dragon species. Among them were not only dragons and lower ranks, but even dragon kings. The knightly kingdom of Argyle is a dragon slayer, a heretical state against nature itself. This made our hero very angry. At that moment, he was distracted by a strange sound, and he saw the boy running straight after the bird. The kid, turning to Ark, asked the bird not to fly there. At that moment the bird crashed into our hero. The young man apologized very much to our hero because Ark did not want to hurt him, he said about his bird, which our hero was holding in his hands at that moment. Hearing the name, our hero asked whether the young man meant the bird to be in the ruler's hands. The boy reported that this was so. The bird was a familiar, his dear friend, so he asked to forgive him. Hearing about the familiar, our hero realized that it was a pet demon. This is not a technique for capturing demons and brainwashing them, but rather a technique for controlling their magical core to create your own personal demon. Giving it to the baby, our hero said that everything was in order, he was not so weak that he could not survive the birdie's strike. At that moment, he thought about how the demon gets along with people, but in his old world, some people had carnivorous crocodiles, our hero thought. At that moment, looking at the young man, he thought that this boy said that demons are friends, not pets. Looking at this cute child, our hero thought that maybe he should reconsider his attitude. The next moment he asked what the young man's name was, and the boy introduced himself as Luke, and pointing to the bird, said that it was Ark, the ice bird. Our hero decided to inquire about Luke's last name. After all, judging by the way he was dressed, he was from a wealthy family. The child, hearing such things, was a little embarrassed, and our hero realized that he had gone too far. Therefore he said that if the young man did not want to answer him, he could not tell him, but he was just curious. Luke apologized to our hero, and the young man, bowing to him, asked whether he could call him by his name or whether the boy preferred to be addressed as Luke Sama. Hearing this address to him, the boy was very embarrassed and preferred to be called simply by his name. Our hero asked if the kid always played in this park and if he had friends. At this moment the boy pointed to his bird again, saying that Ark was his very dear friend. Then our hero asked how long they had known the bird. The young man told him that they had been friends for four years, and our hero thought that it had been quite a long time. 
The next moment the boy asked what the name of our hero was because he did not introduce himself to him. Hearing this, our hero said that his name was simply Hoshi. Then the child became interested in what he was doing. Our hero, he did not know what to answer, then the boy reported that the young man had just been reading, and then he put the books in his bag, saying that he earned a lot of money since he could afford books. Looking at this child, our hero thought that this was very good for a nine-year-old boy. Then, using his mental connection with the abyss, our hero asked to look for them about ways to make money in this world. The next moment our hero took something out of his pocket. Luke saw the balls in his hand. Then our hero said that he did not have a permanent job, he sold balls to make ends meet. Looking at the balls that were in our hero's hand, the young man reported that it was very cool because the young man had magic pearls in his hand, but he had never seen such large pearls before. Our hero was very surprised. The young man reported that this is what they say, if you sell pearls you can live for 10 years. The young man also said that these pearls are made by grinding a magic stone and are used on the tip of a witch's wand or staff. Our hero at that moment thought that in fact this was not a magic pearl, it was a mysterious substance created by void magic. Our hero said that thanks to this there was no need to worry about money. The young man was still interested in where our hero learned to make such large magic pearls, but our hero reported that it was a secret because it was his personal development. And then he wondered if Luke was interested in magic pearls or magic. Feeling a little sad, the young man reported that he could not use magic. Our hero, looking at him, reported that of course he did not have much magic. Hearing this, Luke was very surprised that the young man could determine the amount of magic. Our hero reported that he needed to be able to determine the amount of magical power in order to make magic pearls. And then our hero said that the guy would not tell anyone else about this, and as a deposit he would give him what he had in his hands, pointing to the pearls. The young man, embarrassed, reported that he could not accept such expensive things, saying that it was impossible to do this. Then our hero showed a magic stone that cost less than a magic pearl. Having agreed to the stones, the young man said that he could no longer refuse. Then our hero proposed to make a deal so that now the boy would keep his mouth shut. Luke agreed with our hero, saying goodbye to him and running towards the house. Having run to his mansion, the young man lay on his bed and looked at the stones that our hero gave him. At that moment his favorite bird was next to him. While we were not enjoying the atmosphere, a woman entered the room, turning to Mr. Jesus Lucius, informing him that it was time to eat. The boy, getting out of bed, informed Ark that he would come now. Looking at his birds, he asked Ark not to worry, because it was an ordinary dinner. Luke said that everything would be fine, and that he would return as soon as he could. The next moment the child walked away, leaving his bird alone. Then the boy was led along the corridor to the dining room, and turning to Mr. Tam Lucius, the woman informed him that his father and sister were here today. They were already in the dining room, so they had to hurry and ask to follow her. Walking along the corridor, the boy saw a portrait of his sister, but only silently walked past it, following the woman who said that she had brought Mr. Lucius. The door opened in front of the young man, and he was finally seen, turning to Luke. Seeing his formidable father, the young man apologized for being late. The sister, turning to him, said that he should not have kept them waiting. At this moment they were already gathered at their table. The boy looked at them for a moment, paused and apologized. The father reported that they could start the meal and a lobster was prepared especially for Julius. At this point, her father told Shelley that she knew what she was doing. The mother said that Julius rarely comes home, so it is the mother's duty to prepare the most delicious things for her. Raising a glass to their daughter, they asked if she was at the service today. The girl said that it was so, the guards do not work until tomorrow evening. Besides, she hadn't had a good rest since the battle with the demon lord. She thought she would return home when it was all over. Hearing this, the father reported that it was the right decision and asked if they fought the demon lord head on and what kind of person he was. The girl explained that it was a boy of about 16 with black hair and dark eyes. His face is similar to the faces of representatives of the eastern races. Hearing this, the mother asked if that was all, because she thought he had huge horns. Hearing this, the daughter began to laugh, saying that her mother read too many fairy tales. The boy at that moment sat and silently looked into emptiness, listening to the story of his relatives. If they missed the demon lord, they were very sorry that they could not obtain the materials from the ice dragon king. The mother was upset, because she really hoped to get some accessories made from dragon scales. The daughter apologized very much to her mother. At that moment, her mother tried to reassure her that her return was the best gift for her. Lucius at that moment could only think about how he wanted to return to his room. He was wondering about the guy, wondering if he'd be okay tomorrow. Luke then realized that the description of this guy was similar to the demon lord his sister was just talking about. 
But then, shaking his head, he thought that this simply could not be, because the demon lord is an astral plane, and he cannot be the capital. The young man did not even suspect that at that moment they were being watched, and watching them was precisely the crow that our hero sent to monitor the situation in the city. At this moment, she was sitting near the window, and looking at the feast that Lucius's family had arranged, collecting information. The crow carefully observed what was happening in the house. Our hero saw clearly through it. He didn't even think that everything would coincide like this. Our hero did not expect that Luke would be the brother of the girl he had met earlier on the battlefield. And I decided to leave a couple of ravens on guard just in case. The rest of the crows had to find out rumors, especially among the nobility. It's time for our hero to find out a little more about Luke. A few months later, walking with the child our hero looked at how happy Luke was. Every day the young man comes to the same park, so gradually Hoshi received information about Luke and his family. Luke's real name is Lucius Alcoglius. He is the second son of a fifth-rank baronet. An ordinary elite member of the nobility has an escort when he comes to such a park. But when Luke created Ark, the Ice Bird, Luke had used up most of his magical power, and as a result, he was rejected by his family and servants. At home the young man had absolutely no one to talk to and he was probably lonely. Hoshi wanted to destroy this country, he just wanted to find salvation and did not want to kill all of humanity. But Hoshi had to find a balance. He just wanted to do something about the situation where humanity rules the world and does whatever it pleases. The specific goal of the Lord is to help the spirits and protect the dragons, and it is also necessary to create dungeons around the world to return life energy to the veins of the dragons. The only way to achieve this is to destroy the kingdom of the Argyle Knights. Our hero thought that as soon as the kingdom was destroyed everything would change, enough people will be kept alive to contribute to the normal existence of this country. And for this, Luke could be made king, our hero thought, looking at the happy boy. The next moment the child looked at Hoshi-san in surprise. And at that moment our hero, taking something out of his bosom, informed the young man to keep it with him. The next moment a sword appeared in his hand. The kid was surprised when he saw this knife. Our hero reported that this was for his protection. Luke of course didn't know how to use it at all. Our hero asked the boy to keep this dagger with him, for the sake of Ark. Patting the young man on the head, our hero looked carefully at Luke. Luke asked if it was necessary to do this for Ark's sake, and our hero reported that this was exactly the case. Today, when Luke went to bed, he had to keep Ark close to him. The night before, our hero, heading under the bridge, sat down to rest a little. Having made himself comfortable, he summoned the abyss. Hoshi reported that they were beginning transformation exercises. At this point, the abyss had to first transform into a sword, knowing that only knives and hilt would do. Then turn into a raven or a rat, then there should have been a bear. Seeing how well the abyss carried out his commands, our hero was very happy and reported that the next transformation would be the most difficult. Bigger and more complex, thinking a little, gathering all his will into a fist, our hero made a dragon from the abyss. It looked so realistic that it was even scary and all this was created thanks to the fragments of the Dragon King. And then he realized that Luke's house seemed to be in motion, watching the raven who was watching Luke's house. At this moment, the deputy commander of the Fifth Order had not been home for a long time, and our hero understood that they were planning something, so he asked the Abyss to come closer. The next moment, the Abyss turned into a mouse and ran into the house. The daughter, turning to her father, said that he would finally do it. The father thought that it was high time, but he was not going to spend any more money on useless things, since the opportunity arose to destroy the Burdane family. The Burdanes were two high barons, the daughter reported. Recently, they have been collaborating with a trading company, which will affect the night training school from behind the scenes. The fifth order was indeed the most powerful. Information came to the knights promptly, the father reported, looking at his daughter. The Burdanes were taken too far in a knight training school, forcing his peasants to become knights in order to raise the rank of their families. It seems that the House of Burden underestimates the higher nobility. The father noted that this was true, and that was why they had to disappear. He also said that he had already transferred everything to other lords and the royal family. The daughter reported that that was all, she could not yet compare with him in this art. And at this moment, the father reported that their second son Lucius would be brutally killed by the vile Burdens. As a nobleman and father, he condemns the house of Burdain and brings it to ruin. And Luke's familiar goes to his sister. It was an ice familiar and the sister agreed with it. She was a prodigy with the storm attribute. With an ice attribute familiar, she will become the strongest. Having the attribute of storm and ice, the girl will be able to become a leader among the knights. But they could not allow the bird the freedom of action that he now has. Ark will be shackled with this slave collar, which the father placed right in front of his daughter. 
The father asked his daughter when the mercenaries planned to enter Luke's room. The girl said that it would happen tomorrow. She ordered to break in and kill him while he was sleeping. The daughter and father had no idea that at that moment the mouse which was nearby was listening to all this, and it was that same demon lord. Our hero realized at that moment that these people were going to kill Luke. Our hero came up with his own plan. At this moment, Luke announced that today he would go to bed with Ark. At this moment our hero asked to do one more thing, to collect everything he needed so that he could escape at any moment. Hoshi was quick to reassure the boy that it was just his intuition, realizing that he had scared Luke. Luke already understood what our hero was getting at and could not believe that his own father could kill his own son. At this moment our hero, as if reading his thoughts, asked the young man a question about whether he should choose his family or Ark. Who would he rather live with? At this moment, clutching his bird in his hands, the young man said that of course he would choose the arch. Seeing how proudly Luke said this, our hero realized that it was a stupid question and apologized to him. The next moment he said that the guy would keep this sword with him. The sword will be useful to him when the time comes. The next moment, when Luke wanted to pull the sword out of its sheath, he realized that he was not succeeding. Our hero said that this was true because he was created this way from the beginning. Luke didn't understand what the point was in keeping him with him. Our hero said that Luke could not use a weapon, but it was a magic sword, it did not need to be used. Luke, hearing our hero, thought about what he should have shared with him from the very beginning. Hoshi, seeing the boy a little embarrassed, apologized to him and then asked him to listen to him. Hoshi informed the boy that this sword would save his life, and he had to not let go of it for a second. But once the sword moves, the boy will no longer be able to return to this country. The young man did not care about this. The main thing for him was that Ark was with him. There was no place for him in this country. Our hero at that moment wondered to himself whether the young man was really nine years old and whether everything was okay in his head. That was enough for today. Luke said goodbye to our hero and thanked him. It was night outside, the moon was shining in the sky, and our hero headed to his place. Entering the barn in which there were many dragoons. Looking at them, our hero thought about what a small enclosure these dragoons lived in and how sorry he was for them. At that moment, he saw the collars on them, and using magic, he was able to free the dragoons. At that moment he understood, he knew that they were brainwashed, because he saw how the animals changed in an instant. And then, turning to the dragoons that were in front of him, our hero gave them a chance to take revenge on humanity. At this time, those who were supposed to deal with the boy entered Luke's house. Carefully walking along the corridor, they tried to get into the boy's room. Having seen the room they needed, they were going to enter it. Opening the doors silently, they walked into the room. They saw a child sleeping in his bed with a bird, completely unaware of what was in store for him. One of the infiltrators reported that the customer asked that they not kill the familiar. The next moment, raising the knife directly above the young man, they were going to kill him. But the only ones who were killed were themselves. The counterattack spell was thought to have been cast against them. At that moment, Luke opened his eyes and saw that right above him, there was a dying man who raised a knife over him, which frightened Luke madly. The next moment, another killer, who entered with his partner, realized that the young man had woken up. They urgently needed to deal with the boy. Luke grabbed his sword, realizing that the killer was already running towards him and began screaming for help. At this moment, the sword reported that it was following the orders of the Lord and doing what the boy wanted. And the next moment the sword dealt with the enemy and in the place of the sword there was a dragon. The young man, seeing that the sword had turned into a dragon, was a little scared. But the next moment the dragon informed him so that the young man could be sure that he was on his side. The boy, hearing that the demon was on his side, was glad, asking if he was on Hoshi's side. Luke said that he had done everything our hero asked him to do, and his suitcases were packed, pointing to the bags in the corner. The next moment, our hero saw that the dragon appeared in the night sky and saw the signal that was given to him. Once the signal was given, he commanded his dragoons to go forward, brutally tear and kill, make them feel despair. The next moment, his comrades moved towards the city. After the explosion, the knights who guarded the city tried to understand what was happening. But then they saw that this explosion came from the area of the aristocracy. It was necessary to immediately contact the commanders and prepare to move into this area. At that moment, the dragon created by our hero was raging in the area. The knights, seeing the black dragon, could not believe that it was really him, realizing that he should not have existed. At that moment they saw that the dragoons were approaching them, starting to deal with one after another. The knights did not understand why the dragoons were here, much less why they were attacking people. The next moment, the commanders ordered the rest to go on the attack. After all, in their opinion, there was only one enemy, and it was necessary to surround him, then they would win. But it was already too late. 
At that moment, the commander saw in front of him the black demons that our hero had created and did not understand why they were caught in this position right now, so I order all the knights to destroy and deal with these demons. But then one of the demons turned into a giant bear, attacking people and dealing with them. While the bear dealt with some knights, others began to run away, but they did not have to run far, because the next moment they were overtaken by the dragoons. The knights thought that they could deal with the dragoons simply by talking to them. But the next moment, when the knight tried to calm one of the dragoons, telling him that if he calmed down, he would receive something. This dragoon began to deal directly with this knight in front of the others. More than a hundred dragoons. Freely transforming abyss. A dragon from the abyss, raging in the area of the aristocrats. Our hero had everything he needed for complete madness. Observing what was happening, our hero also got involved in a fight, seeing the knights that stood in front of him. He knew that now all he had to do was just find Luke. There was complete chaos in the city and Luke, watching this, being left completely alone in the place with Ark, tried to understand what was happening here. At this moment, one of the killers who should have been dead was still able to move, trying to talk to Luke, who was terrified. The enemy tried to kill the young man, but the next moment, when Luke tried to protect his bird, something happened and the enemy was defeated. Opening his eyes afterwards, the frightened boy saw that the dragon had dealt with him. The dragon was telling us that it was time for our baby to leave. Turning to Luke, the dragon looked carefully at the young man, analyzing the boy's behavior. Seeing a high ability to think, high emotional stability. When he is in the company of the ice bird, his heart rate becomes stable. Luke felt safe with his familiar. The abyss carried out the order. The next moment the dragon turned his back to the boy, and then the young man realized that he needed to climb onto his back. The dragon reported that the young man was thinking in the right direction, and was waiting for him to climb. The boy understood that together with Ark he could do this, and if it was for his friend, then he would climb on this dragon. The next moment, climbing onto the dragon, the young man was ready to ride. The dragon reported that they had to move on to phase two. Hearing about phase two of course, Luke wondered what that meant. The dragon announced that they would head towards the great barrier, creating a diversion. After which everyone noticed that the dragon was flying, and at that moment Small and Luke was with him. Clinging to the dragon, he tried desperately to hold on so as not to fall off it. At that moment, all the residents carefully watched the bird that appeared in the sky, realizing that it was a real dragon, they were very frightened. Our hero carefully watched the dragon, and then, showing a certain gesture, moved straight along the icy stairs to observe what was happening from the side. Having called our abyss, the hero asked that it fly to him as soon as possible, and then he would jump on it. The next moment, the abyss flew up to the ice ladder that the young man had created, and he in turn jumped straight from this ladder onto the dragon. Jumping onto the dragon, our hero greeted Luke, saying that all that remained was to destroy the Great Barrier and flee to the north. At this moment Luke, seeing our hero, tried to understand who was right in front of him, because the young man landed in front of him with his back straight, and therefore the boy could not see who was able to ride the dragon. Luke looked at the young man carefully. At this moment, our hero asked him not to worry, introducing himself to him as Hoshi, addressing Luke. Hearing this voice, Luke realized that this was Hoshi-san. Our hero congratulated both of them on their successful escape because he told him that something would happen and he was right about it. Hearing this, the initially joyful young man became a little gloomy. The next moment he tried to understand whether it was necessary to go so far. Seeing that the young man had become gloomy, our hero tried to assure him that this confusion was not his fault. After all, he planned and carried out it of his own free will, and he saved Luke completely by accident. If they had not met, the same thing would have happened. At that moment, sitting on a huge dragon, our hero and Luke were leaving the city. People who saw the dragon understood that it was moving north. The knights watching this thought that it was impossible for the dragon to leave the city. There was a great barrier there if he collided with it, it would be like in the palm of his hand. Our hero, watching the night sky, tried to understand whether they would be able to break through the barrier. Turning to the abyss, he suggested that he try to break the barrier with his mighty breath. Hoshi wanted to measure its strength, the young man said, addressing the abyss. Looking down, our hero at that moment noticed that the soldiers were already nearby. If they don't break through the barrier, these soldiers will definitely try to kill them. The next moment, the dragon, spewing flames, tried to break the barrier. Our hero, watching this, could not believe that the dragon's breath was not able to break through the barrier. Hoshi understood that then he would have to use his powers. The next moment, breaking the barrier, our hero was able to fly out of the city on a dragon. The knights, seeing that there was a hole in the barrier, were surprised that it was so simple that our hero was able to figure it out and fly away. At that moment, the young man looked at the damage he was able to cause, and Luke also looked back at the city for the last time. So together, they were able to leave the city. 
After flying for enough time, our heroes landed near the hut. The dragon, descending to her, put the guys on the ground. Standing in front of the entrance, our hero asked the young man to take off his shoes upon entering. The kid agreed with our hero and the fact that he was invited to the house. The young man offered to cook him something to eat and Luke kindly agreed. At this moment, our hero reminded Luke that he told him that he wanted to live with Ark. Luke also confidently answered that he was sure of it. Then our hero summed up the fact that now they were here and hoped that Luke did not regret anything. The boy proudly reported that he did not regret anything and was happy. Seeing that Luke was serious, our hero was about to tell him his plan. Addressing the abyss, he asked it to guard the territory, and our hero explained that this incident would show them their place. Hoshi allowed them to think that they were stronger, but in the end they ended up in his trap. Hoshi will attack them without completely destroying them, then strong fighters will come here. Telling all this, our hero at that moment prepared food for the young man and talked about the fact that strong fighters would have to stay here to fight off the dragon. Next time they will most likely succeed. By luring them here, he did not give them the opportunity to return to him to attack without worrying about defense. This was his secret. The next moment, our hero thought that it was time to talk about him and Luke said with interest that he too would really like to know about it. Then our hero asked to be allowed to go straight to the point. The true essence of Hoshi is spirit. Then Luke decided to ask whether it was a humanoid spirit, because humanoid spirits belong only to the highest ranks and our hero was the highest rank of them. He just realized that in front of him was a demon lord, and the demon lord in the person of Hoshi Sen decided to encourage the boy, saying that he was a great guy and thought very quickly. Our hero introduced himself as Miyaki Hoshi, a being they called the Astral Demon Lord. He was the one who killed more than 5,000 knights on White and Silver Pike, one of the main problems for them was him. Luke was incredibly scared when he heard about the demon lord of the Astral Plane, the lord who killed about 5,000 people at the Battle of Raimundus. But at that moment, Luke remembered how our hero was reading a book in the park in the royal capital. The young man reported that it was surprising, but he was not caught. And then our hero decided to tell Luke so that he would know that the people attacked him first. The people killed the king of the ice dragons. Hearing this, Luke was scared and then reported that he was sorry, turning away from our hero, the boy tried not to look him in the eye. Then Hoshi asked him not to apologize because he planned to destroy the kingdom of the Knights of Argyll. Hearing this, the kid was very scared that our hero was going to destroy the whole country. And at this moment, Hoshi reported that all the cities were already ready to fall by his hand, with the exception of the royal city of Merigriff, which may turn out to be impregnable due to its enormous strength, but our hero had a plan. The next moment, Hoshi showed Luke his demon, which looked like a black ball, telling him that it was called the Abyss, the demon he controlled. This demon has meotic powers and can take various forms from a dagger to a dragon. The next moment, showing the coin, our hero reported that now the abyss is masquerading in gold and silver coins in the city under the guise of money. Because money is distributed well and no one strictly controls it. They will soon be all over the city. Without a truly strong enemy such as the royal guard, the city would easily fall. Our hero reported that he would soon be able to destroy cities at will. The abyss of money is like a time bomb. Revealing his plan, our hero revealed that he was the lord of magic. She is under his control. The great barrier covering the city is not an obstacle for him. Perhaps our hero will even be able to destroy the city's magic system. At this point, Luke wondered why our hero didn't do this, just destroy them. Our hero reported that he did not intend to kill people. Hearing this, Luke was shocked by what the young man was saying. Our hero understood what the boy was thinking because their image of the demon lord was simply hilarious, a monster with seven horns and eyes. They and spiritual beings are the guardians of nature. A system of governing nature with eight spirit kings was built long ago. Each of the eight spirit kings has its own attribute, thanks to which it protects its property. In other words, a demon lord is also a spirit species, so he is a member of the natural system. Their goal was to control the magical power of nature, but this hopelessly leads to war with humanity. Listening to our hero's story, Luke asked why this happened. And Hoshi said that in order to control the magic, the demon lord creates dungeons. Dungeons create demons, and demons attack living beings and steal their magical power, which is why humanity and the demon lord always become enemies. Luke summed up what it means for a demon lord to only kill a certain percentage of people who have magic. Our hero reported that this was true in principle, because his goal was to establish balance, and for this he decided that the kingdom of the angel knights would be destroyed. Conference Hall, Royal Castle Merigriff Capital The people gathered in this hall were worried and sat directly in front of the king, who was unhappy. 
The next moment, the king, looking at his subordinates, announced that First Order had to speak and turning to the Commander Sigil, he allowed him to speak. Commander Sigil spoke, reporting that about 120 dragoons belonging to the First Order had scattered throughout the city. The cause of the outbreak was either a faulty or altered magical device. There was no way to stop them, so they had to kill everyone. This caused significant discontent among residents living near their breeding sites. So far they have not found any evidence of sabotage by neighboring countries. On the other hand, they did not find any concrete evidence that this was the work of a demon lord. With this, the commander's entire report was over, and the king looked at him with a grin. People in the hall began to whisper that it probably wasn't the demon lord, and if it wasn't him, then they should have been saved. Here one young man, speaking, asked to give him the floor. And the king gave the floor to the smooth demonologist Rutan Heil, informing him that he was allowed to speak. Completely unprepared for this, the young man began to search among the papers for the one he needed, apologizing to everyone. People, looking at him, tried to understand who he was and wondered if he could know anything about the demon lord. The young man reported that disabling the grimoire of slavery was used on the dragoon. The relationship with the time of appearance, a comprehensive consideration of time and motives, shows everyone that the most likely cause of the dragoon rebellion was the demon lord. The king understood everything because the appearance of the dragon, the outbreak of the dragoons. People at this moment were thinking about what a waste of time it was, grabbing their foreheads and sighing heavily. The king, screaming and rising from his seat, announced that this was a declaration of war on his country. The enemy is a resurrected demon lord, and he has declared a campaign to capture the demon lord and his castle, and they will definitely make him repent. The king also understood that the incident with the dragoons in the capital, the appearance of the dragon inside the barrier, and its further resolution, unrest in various places. Assuming that the astral demon lord is in charge of all of them, a special governing body must be created. The decision on the leader will be made later, the king shouted, and everyone who objected to the attack on the demon's crystal palace had to raise their hands. At this moment, everyone was shocked by the king's statement and listened carefully to what he would say next. The king, also speaking, reported that he saw no objections, so he himself would be present during the invasion, and they had to start with the fact that the entire Fifth Order would come under his command, so he would have to go himself. Hearing this, his subordinates informed his majesty that there were five order commanders in this country, and he did not have to take the Fifth Order under his command. Other knights, for example First Order, his subordinates wanted to speak, but at that moment the king reported that the trained dragoons had gone on a rampage. His order's vigilance was lowered. They were sent to guard various places, so there was no time to attack, not to mention the Second Order, which specializes in internal security. Third and Fourth Order he wanted them to focus on national defense. The Third Order will be tasked with helping the First Order with their magical abilities. The Fourth Order will guard the borders with the help of wyverns. As far as the king knew, news of the destruction of the barrier had already reached other countries. This means that there are only five orders left to attack, so the king had to go with them. Of course, they did not have to set off right away. First they had to thoroughly explore the mountain peaks, only then engage in battle, which is why they sent cartographers. Subordinates informed the king that the dungeon was huge and would take decades to complete. The king smiled and said that this was indeed the case, but then they would turn to forces from another world he thought they could rely on their skills. At this moment, turning to the demon lord, the king asked him to wait a little. A year has passed since the failure of the mission on Raymond, and the sand in the clock has already begun to run out. At this moment, our hero informed little Luke that he hated humanity. He wanted to destroy the kingdom of the Knights of Argyle, which is the heart of humanity. Luke was shocked that our hero wanted to destroy him, but then he did not understand why our hero saved him, because he could not help Hoshi in this matter. Our hero said that he simply saved the young man because he liked him, because Luke and Ark were good friends. Hearing this reason, the boy was very surprised. And our hero reported that this was a very good reason, because he would like to succeed in his plan. He knew of course that it would take a long time, but first he had to save Ark's life. Hearing this, Luke did not understand what our hero meant. Hoshi reported that Ark was in danger. But Luke can conclude a full-fledged agreement with him, as was the case between them. Luke had heard about a full-fledged agreement, but the young man did not understand what this had to do with the life of the Arch. Our hero asked if the boy knew what a spiritualist contract was, and it was a magical contract between spirit and man as Luke knew. When a spirit and a person make a pact, their magical power is shared, and they can summon more powerful magic. This method activates more powerful magic, but Ark is a demon, not a spirit. Our hero reported that this was the wrong thinking. Demons are also a kind of spirits. They are a little different from regular perfumes in some ways, but they are basically the same type of perfume. After all, demons are spirits of magic. 
The contract, all Luke has to do is give Hoshi permission and then everything will be ready. Ark had too much magic for a forest bird and was too dangerous, Hoshi reported. Hearing this, Luke did not understand what our hero was talking about, but then Hoshi explained that if the boy signs the contract and Ark becomes a familiar, then there will be no problems. Our hero thought that they were in a rather bad situation, there was a possibility of oversaturation of magic. Having heard about this, Luke could not believe the words of our hero, but it was for this reason that our hero offered him to sign a contract. Thanks to him, the amount of magic will correspond to an acceptable standard and will cease to be a problem for Luke. In addition, this will remove the restrictions and Luke can regain his ice attribute magic. Having heard everything that our hero said Luke, after thinking a little, thought that it was for the sake of Ark and announced that he would sign the contract. The contract was confirmed by our hero and the next moment Luke and Ark felt an unusual power. At this moment, Luke did not understand what it was. Our hero, seeing the power that was around the bird, thought about how huge it was and the next moment he set up a barrier. This scared Luke and he asked if our hero was sure it was safe. Hoshi tried to reassure him that he had set up a barrier so they were both safe. This is the magic that lay dormant inside Ark and it covered the entire room. The next moment the egg, which was completely made of ice, began to crack and our hero asked Luke to come here and take a look. Luke, approaching our hero, carefully watched as the egg began to crack. Our hero, watching this, thought about how amazing it was. At this moment, Luke tried to resist the onslaught of Ark's power. Turning to Ark, the young man tried to understand whether the bird was okay because due to the smoke that appeared in the room, the boy could not see anything at all. The next moment Ark appeared in a completely new guise. Our hero, seeing him, was also surprised, trying to understand whether it was really Ark. The next moment, Hoshi, watching him, reported that he would not call him an ice bird because this was already a completely different level. At this moment, Luke asked why all this was happening. Hoshi explained that the evolved crystal bird is a new type of demon. It is a death demon that has dominion over ice and cold. Perhaps there was an ice phoenix right in front of them. Hearing about the ice phoenix, the boy was incredibly happy, and hugging his friend, he congratulated him on his evolution. Our hero, watching this reunion, was very happy. And it looked like Ark's magical power level was stable, and he was able to evolve successfully. Luke's magical power was restored, and watching the happy boy, our hero thought that they had done a good job. But the guys are like rising stars. Addressing Luke and Ark, our hero congratulated them on their evolution. Now Luke's magic had to return, and he had to try. The next moment, Luke looked at his hands and decided to try magic, and saw that it really worked. It was ice magic that he could use again. Seeing Luke's magic, our hero announced that they would begin training tomorrow, and as soon as the results appeared, they would go on a mission. Our hero also said that he would count on the guys, and they agreed with him. The king's office in the royal castle. The young man, standing near the king, tried to ask whether he really wanted to see him. Everyone asked the guy to sit down at the table, because he perfectly substantiated the involvement of the demon lord. At their last meeting, and the king appreciated his insight. The next moment, turning to the young man to Mr. Kavei Rutan, the king's subordinate reported that his majesty wanted to receive information about the castle of the demon lord. At this moment, there were many papers in front of them, and the king reported that he had heard that the size of the demon lord's castle was simply unimaginable. Rutan reported that this was indeed the case because the castle was much larger than in the past. His astral demon lord ability was amazing. The map was estimated to take decades to complete, a subordinate of the king reported. But however, the king thought that there was an opinion that it would be easier to analyze the labyrinth with the help of otherworldly creatures. There is an organization in Linden under their control, and it is called the Freedom Guild. If they order them, they will be able to increase the efficiency of their research a thousand times. Each industry has its own genius, these, for example, created innovative magical tools. The king's subordinate did not understand if it could be done so easily. The king thought that he knew perfectly well what he was doing and would serve as an assistant to the cartographer. Hearing this, Ruthen was very happy and obeyed the king's order. The king at that moment informed Mikhail, his subordinate, to immediately move forward with Ruten because every second was already counting. Mikhail obeyed the king, and Ruten tried to understand whether he would really go on this task trying to stop the king and his subordinate for a moment, who had already decided everything. They had to destroy the labyrinth as quickly as possible, because they had to immediately put an end to the reign of the demon lord, the king said. It was also necessary to reduce its strength by at least a quarter. This would be their tribute to the fallen knights. A few months later, Lindel, a fortified city free for outsiders, a crack that formed in the barrier allowed Hoshi and Luke to penetrate through it. 
both of them had not been here for a long time, observing the city and Hoshi reported that this time they managed to enter unnoticed and now he just needs to find a place to stay. The friend understood that it was already almost 12 at night, but our hero understood that he was still a living person. It's summer now, but if they sleep outside, nothing bad will happen. Our hero of course understood this when turning to Luke. At that moment they landed in the city. Our hero carefully looked around, and at that moment Hoshi reported that he was not against Ark's disguise. But Luke's appearance is unnatural, he was an aristocrat after all. Luke asked not to laugh at him. At that moment, they were both walking through the city. The next moment they approached the hotel and asked for a room, they were offered one room. Giving away a lot of coins, which were also the abyss that our hero used, he was offered a room. They were able to sleep, because tomorrow morning they had to leave. The next day, hotel dining room. There were many knights and also other people in the inn. Our hero sat at the table, and the young man watched as Luke carefully ate with Ark. Then suddenly one of the men reported that he did not understand who created this dungeon. He was immediately told that it was the demon lord. People were discussing how complex our hero had built the dungeon. At that moment Luke heard two people talking and looked carefully at our hero. He just calmly continued his meal. The next moment, when the young man stood up, he scared Luke and Ark a little. Hoshi reported that they simply had to leave already. Luke followed our hero a little fearfully. Of course, Hoshi was a little angry, but he didn't have time for that nonsense. The only way to lure Dungeon Order commanders is to help them draw a map. To do this, he had to join the Freedom Guild as a warrior and geographer. He will help draw up this map and will make all the people who underestimated the Demon Lord regret it. A prerequisite for deploying an army is completing the dungeon map, and as soon as the army enters the dungeon, it will be changed, for which the Freedom Guild was needed. The Freedom Guild, an organization with branches in every country that has ratified international law, is a giant corporation that extends beyond its borders. It was the foremost organization for people of extraordinary ability in any field. Thanks to them, orders for the knightly kingdom of Argyll are quickly completed. Also among them is one in particular, there is one interesting large-scale order, exploring the labyrinth of the demon lord of the astral plane. Our hero at that moment came to the Freedom Guild and carefully looked at the orders that were hanging on the wall. And at that moment he saw that he was being offered to take a ticket, thinking that it was very modern. Also, there were many different types of otherworldly creatures. Otherworlders are literally people from another world. One of these, for example, was a man who once became a hero of the Kingdom of the Knights of Argyle. At that moment, our hero was given number 15 and asked to go to window number 2. The girl asked how she could help our heroes, and at that moment, Hoshi asked for registration for two. Having given the form to our hero, he was asked to fill it out. The young man, having filled out this form, gave it to the girl. She left one copy for our heroes and had to register them and ask a few questions. Looking at our hero's documents, the girl realized that Mr. Neff Hoshi was a swordsman with a rare ability to sense magic and he was from another world. Luke Sama was his student, but he was not from another world. Luke explained that he met Mr. Bonahoshi in this world. The girl thanked him for his answer. The next moment she showed them the units to which our heroes could belong. They carefully looked at the papers that the girl gave them. In front of our hero was his paper, informing that Hoshi-sama was accepted into the warrior units and the unit of otherworldly forces. Luke-sama was an ice magic user, so he belongs to the warrior division and the magic division. Then our hero said that he should have been registered with both. Luke only to the warrior division. The girl, having written down their data, wanted to give them tickets for guild members. The next moment, giving the cards to our heroes, the girl said that they could be used as identification documents, so they had to be very careful not to lose these documents. Congratulated our heroes that they were both now members of the guild. The girl also added that in the warrior unit, they would have to fight in a training battle. Our hero did not expect this at all. The girl said that the training battle to determine the rank would be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And also in the other world department there is a true or false test, which is always open. She asked why the guys shouldn't go through it. Our hero understood that in other words, they had to go through in order to become full members of the guild. The girl confirmed his words. The next moment, our hero asked Luke to wait here. While remaining, Luke wished good luck to our hero, and he went to the otherworldly department. At this moment, the guild members who were in the building, noticing our hero, realized that they had not seen him before. They thought it was a new guy. Introducing ourselves to our hero in front of him was Max, his examiner. Our hero introduced himself as Hoshi. The next moment the young man offered him treatment without titles. Picking up our hero, he asked whether the guy understood the language he spoke, and Max spoke English. Our hero was very surprised that the guy spoke English. 
Ben perking up, the examiner thought that this was probably our hero's native language, it was English. But our hero reported that this was not wrong and his native language is Japanese. But then he realized that he couldn't do anything, and it turned out that he didn't know English very well, having tried to answer Max in it. The examiner, turning to his friends, who also saw our hero for the first time, reported that this guy was from the earth and also Japanese. Hearing about this, the girl from the team was very happy, turning to our hero and coming closer to him. She told the young man that he was very nice. Our hero tried to figure out what was wrong with these guys and thanked the girl. The girl, after watching our hero, wanted him to become her partner for the evening. Hearing this, our hero was completely shocked by the proposal. The next moment, the girl, having received a blow to the head from her partner, looked at him sadly. This guy didn't understand what Melia was talking about. Turning to Randy, the girl rubbed her bump on her forehead. And Randy didn't understand why she did this to shy people. The girl reported that Yuta said that the Japanese loved the clothes she was wearing, and that some even had their own preferences. Max was very surprised, because he did not know that the young man was from the same planet as him. His partners, hearing that the guy was from the same planet, were surprised. And then they realized that Randy and Melia were not of land. People from other worlds are not only inhabitants of the earth, the guys reported, a little offended, to our hero. Hearing about this, our hero was very surprised, and then asked where Max himself was from. Was he from America, or from somewhere else? Max told our hero that he himself came from Texas. He was a cowboy, and even knew how to ride a horse. Hearing this, our hero was very surprised or Max thought that the young man reacted to this somehow strangely, for which our hero immediately apologized. Max reported that this happened all the time, and he had the same reaction as Yuta. Having heard about Utah, our hero inquired about this man and Max said that this guy was from his country and he was charming. Yuta was rank 7. Hearing about the rank, our hero is again surprised. He asked, and then Max didn't understand whether the young man really wasn't even aware of the rank system. This is a strength rating, the higher the number, the stronger it was. And the top, according to rumors, is rank 15, the higher you rise, the fewer people there are. Only 20% were at rank 6 and said that their team was at about rank 5. Knight Commander and Royal Guard Knight are monsters with rank above 10. Then our hero decided to inquire what the ranks of the Demon Lord and Dragon King were. Max thought for a while, and then reported that there were individual differences, but roughly speaking, the Dragon King was rank 11, and the Demon Lord was probably rank 3. Hearing that the Demon Lord was rank 3, our hero was surprised, not understanding why was it so low. The next moment he was called and Max informed that it was time for our hero to take the exam for the guild. Our hero thanked Max and ran to the exam. The guys supported our hero and asked him to tell them his rank when they received the results. At this moment, our hero was thinking that he made Luke wait, and he was too nervous when he met these people. Luke obediently waited for our hero, sitting and reading a book. Noticing Hoshi, he perked up pleasantly, and our hero thanked the boy for waiting. Now it was time for exams, and our hero asked if the kid could cope. He of course said that he could handle everything. Our hero asked him not to take high places and not to rush forward too much. Luke agreed with him. The next moment they came to the exam. Seeing the girl who was sitting at the entrance, our hero apologized and said that he would like to take this test. Standing with him was Luke, who also wanted to take the test. The girl, seeing our heroes, agreed. Addressing Mr. Hoshi and Mr. Luke, she said that this test was to measure rank within the guild. And then she asked our heroes to take a test in training room 1, where she sent our heroes. The guys headed to this room, where the examiner greeted them. The examiner reported that the examinees were again very young, looking at everyone who was present. But he said that however, it would not be so difficult. He will judge his rank based on the results of the battle with them. Here he represented Sira and Mira, twin rank 8 fighters. All the guys will fight them. They may hurt, but they won't cause serious harm. Our hero looked closely at the older sister and younger sister who were right in front of him. The older sister, Sira the Spearwoman, who uses magic to control the attributes of the earth and trees, and then finishes him off with a spear. The younger sister, Mira the Swordswoman, also has the attribute of earth and wood, but she is more martial arts oriented than her sister, and only uses magic as a supplement. Now they will see the rank in action. He didn't know about martial arts, but these girls were fine with magic. Now this was an opportunity for him to find out what the Demon Lord's power truly was. And everyone began the exam, planning to start with Luke and Mira. The examiner reported that if they got hurt, he would heal them with his magic, so no one had to worry about it. Our hero at that moment, watching Luke, wished him good luck. Having asked whether the guys were ready, the examiners began to begin. 
Our hero, carefully watching his friend, tried to calm Luke mentally, watching the young man. Since both were ready, it could begin. And the younger sister reported that everything was fine, looking at the boy and thinking how cute he was. The examiner repeated the rules. Knock out the enemy's weapon or knock him to the ground. At this point it was reported that it was a victory. Luke grabbed his sword, just like his opponent. The next moment the examiner told them to begin their fight. Luke used his power, and the girl went at him using earth magic and wood magic. So they began their battle. The next moment, Luke saw that he was surrounded by the magic of the tree, and the wooden branches were all around him. The hatch was attacked by the wood magic used by the younger sister. At this moment, the girl noticed that the young man was able to stop her, realizing that her magic had been stopped, she was very surprised. Our hero saw that Luke immediately used this technique, and the older sister did not understand what it was. Our hero explained that it was Luke's secret ability, something only this boy can do. The girl standing behind our hero just looked at him silently, and the next moment they both began to watch the fight. Luke used his magic and began to attack his opponent using her own tree. The girl, seeing such an attack flying at her, tried to dodge and thought that this was breaking the rules. Luke reported that the girl was wrong, everything was according to the rules, and she understood that she could not get close, she never thought that she would use her next attack anyway. The next moment, taking a stance, the girl asked if Luke wanted to see her next attack. She used the gift of the earth, summoning a giant golem, which turned out to be so huge that Luke was scared. Our hero, looking at Luke, understood that this was not good. And the next moment, the girl who was right in front of him, using a wooden golem, was going to attack the young man. Luke knew he couldn't stop it. But the next moment the girl stopped and reported that she had defeated him. The examiner shouted that Mira was the winner, and the girl smiled at Luke. At that moment, the boy fell to the ground in horror because he knew from the very beginning that he would not win. Mira asked Luke not to be upset and offered him her help because the boy made her, a girl of rank 8, sweat. The examiner, coming closer to the boy, also agreed with the girl because one day he informed him that he would surpass rank 8 and a brilliant future awaited him. Luke, smiling, thanked her for the support. Mira was so fascinated by the young man that, seeing his smile, she tried to hug him. Our hero, seeing this, announced that now it was his turn, turning to his sister. Luke at that moment saw Ark, and hugging him apologized to him, informing him that he had lost. The sister, already watching the young man, tried to understand what was the matter. After all, this boy was too cute, and she wanted him to join them, but she didn't know what to do. At that moment, she realized that if they defeated Hoshi, his teacher, then they would be from the world and would become his teachers, and that would be great thinking that perhaps she was a genius if they could get the young man on their team. Our hero, watching the girl at that moment, looking at her face, thought about what happened to her. The girl looked very strange, and the young man thought that he might have offended her in some way. Then realizing that she was also rank 8, our hero realized that they were deadly dangerous. He understood this from the previous battle. Watching Luke and then how he fought Mira was probably quite a strong opponent. But on the other hand, there was a demon lord, he was rank 3. I thought about what chance he had against this girl. His opponent was a spearman. They are good at martial arts and plant magic. At this moment, our hero decided to use telepathy and watched the recordings of all the battles in which he and the Abyss participated. The young man analyzed the enemy's battle with the Knight Commander class. Elimination of unnecessary information, prediction of moves from 1 to 50. Use of creating a foundation based on all experience since the moment of reincarnation. At this moment, while our hero was conducting these tests, his student Luke supported him. He shouted to the master wishing him good luck. At this moment, Mira behind him supported Sira, informing her that she should have won. Computational modeling was great, it allowed our hero to monitor the situation, calculate his moves. At this moment, our hero took a stance that Sira could not help but notice. After all, his stance did not look professional, and she was rank 8 and was not easy to defeat. At this moment, the examiner saw that they were ready and commanded the start of the battle. Our hero, who grabbed his weapon, began to watch the girl, and the girl named Sira wanted to make sure that Luke would definitely become part of their team. The next moment the command was given, and our heroes began to go into battle. Sira attacked Hoshi using her magic, our hero seeing this. He knew it, because turn one was for her, her earthen bullets. Our hero was able to easily repel them, and the girl, watching this, could not believe that she did not hit him. After all, she hoped that the young man would evade them. The next moment our hero went on the attack, and she felt how strong he was. A fight broke out between them and our hero, fighting with Sira, she felt his fencing skills. The girl thought about what it was, just amazingly watching the young man, because she realized that he fought almost the same as one of the members of the order. Our hero at that moment copied Sigil's fighting technique. 
After all, it was all thanks to the battles he had participated in over the past six months. At that moment the young man began to attack Sira again. Sira could not believe that the young man was pushing her aside, she had to dodge his blows. The next moment, when she saw another attack, she realized that she had to move away. Our hero saw that the girl was gaining distance and wanted to use a long-range attack. The next moment, Sira began to attack our hero using her tree power. Sira thought that she had succeeded, but our hero was able to break her attack, which the girl simply could not believe. Hoshi easily destroyed her attack, reporting that it was not bad. Sira understood what it meant to need magic that used substances that could not be developed by magic. Hoshi understood that she wanted to use the dispelled magic with her. The next moment our hero used sealing. When Sira tried to stop him, she realized that her magic was not activating. And now our hero, using all the strength he had, realized that he needed to use all the close combat experience that he had accumulated. Standing opposite each other, our hero was confident in himself, and Sira at that moment desperately defended herself from his attacks. The next moment, the young man was able to defeat her and Hoshi was declared the winner of the duel. After all, Sira was lying on the floor, trying to catch her breath, under the onslaught of our hero, who pointed his weapon at her. Luke was incredibly happy because the teacher won. Sira's sister was surprised. Mira was shocked at this moment and looked at her sister being defeated. Our hero at that moment was thinking about what rank the Freedom Guild would give to the Demon Lord. The fight was over and Hoshi won. At this moment, Sira looked at our hero in surprise, and the examiner understood that the young man was strong, but did not understand how the guy was able to defeat Sira. After all, no matter how much magic he could block, it was just a beating and the fighting style that the young man used at the end was very unusual. But the examiner of course would like to see his magic. At this moment, our hero helped Sira get up. The girl embarrassedly thanked him, saying that our hero was too strong. Then she started yelling at Hoshi and asked where he had been before and why he was only now joining them. Our hero, seeing her pressure, did not understand at all how he needed to react, and then reported that it was a secret. Hearing this, the girl turned away in embarrassment. At that moment, Luke ran to our hero, reporting that Hoshi-san was wonderful. Hoshi steadily improved his abilities and, turning, reported that this was all for the sake of revenge for his student. The number of minions of the Abyss is growing. It's worth looking at foreign intelligence data, our hero thought. At this point, apologizing for interrupting their pleasantries, they were informed that they wanted to voice the results of their observations. The examiner reported that, first of all, about Luke. After all, his powerful magic was impressive however, his use of magic seemed a little rough, and it was weak to sudden situations, so he assigned the young man rank 5. And then the examiner reported on Hoshi Kun. Not to mention his swordsmanship, his magic defense is very good, and he would really like to see his magic abilities, so his decision was rank 9. Our hero understood that if he only had rank 9, then he was still far from being a knight commander. The next moment they were given the test results. Mr. Hoshi and Mr. Danal Luke had to give them to the administrator and their ranks would be added to the membership card. At this point the examiner praised both young men and said that it was a good job. Our heroes also thanked them and the girls Mira and Sira thanked the guys for sparring with them. A month has passed since our hero registered with this organization. He became a freedom fighter with the task of drawing a map of his own great labyrinth, although in fact he was only in the great labyrinth twice. The next moment, Yuda attacked our hero and, seeing how he reflected his attacks, praised the young man for having excellent swordsmanship. Our hero of course was pleased. The next moment, Yuta, jumping away from him, informed him that he would not be able to stop him along with it. At this moment our hero, addressing people, wanted to argue with him, because he would not be lucky this time. Yuta, laughing and throwing back his sword, reported that he wanted to see how our hero would cope with this. The next moment, he attacked him with his fire magic. Our hero, dodging all his blows, was able to resist him, which Yuta could not believe, because Hoshi extinguished all the fireballs with a wave of his sword. Our hero reported that everything has limits, but he is just good with a sword. At that moment, Yuta announced that he was giving up and everyone called Hoshi the winner. Everyone was wondering if our hero really had rank 9. Which of course he could not answer, because he was registered only a month ago. Yuta was trying to figure out what kind of technique our hero had, behind which his magic disappeared. Everyone was very interested in this, and they asked our hero to share this information with them. It was a question of life for a magician. Our hero reported that this technique destroys magic and prevents it from being activated. So, the members of the Ice Dragon Crawl Search Team were training and preparing for the challenge. The task was to be completed within two months, and there was still a lot of time left. 
Our hero was patrolling a snowy mountain at that moment, trying to figure out how far they were from the location of the King of the Ice Dragons. Heading towards the Black Abyss through the snow, our hero asked. Bizna calculated about 30 minutes. Our hero began to secretly search for the location of the Ice Dragon King. At this moment, the Abyss was reporting that the Knights were 15 minutes west of here, they had discovered a Wyvern, and it was probably the Fourth Order. After hearing about the Fourth Order, our hero did not understand why they were here, and the Abyss found out what they were up to. The next moment, she informed the young man that they were looking for the Ice Dragon ship. Our hero believed that the agreements were only with the Freedom Guild. Perhaps they were, of course, looking for important information. It looks like someone from the Fifth Order is leading the search party. At this moment, one of the Knights of the Orders, who was sitting on a wyvern, was carefully observing the situation around. The man was supposed to start a search and destroy operation, but there was a guy from the Fifth Order. Therefore, our hero decided to observe first for now. They needed to find the Ice Dragon King. They had to warn the Ice Dragon King as soon as possible. After that, our hero will gather his forces to destroy them and will also be able to assess his combat power. Addressing the Lord, the Abyss informed them that they would soon enter the Ice Dragon King's line of sight. Our hero thought that this magic power was still not unclean enough. At that moment, the dragon looked questioningly at the black dragon that was right in front of him. Our hero saw his friend in him, saying that he was the Lord of Demons of this generation and presented himself as a good astral. There was a dragon in front of him, posing as Crystal, the King of the Ice Dragons. Our hero was surprised that he had the same name as his predecessor. He reported that knowledge is inherited, but not memory, he did not know about the Dragon Kings of the past. Our hero explained that he has his own maze in the North Mountain. The dragon could make it his home, for which the dragon was very grateful to our hero. The next moment, our hero believed that he had to inform the dragon that he could be captured by humans, and we asked him to get out of here as soon as possible. The dragon, upon hearing about this information, was very surprised. The young man realized that if the dragon had been flying all this time, then probably people had not found it because of this. The dragon reported that he was mining a dragon vein that flows from the peak of the spirit, and apparently it's time to pay for it. It seems that the previous generation had only gone half the way, hiding at the peak of the spirit, leaving other places that needed to be fixed. His predecessor, the king of the ice dragons, locked himself in the peak of the spirit. Being on the defensive, he fled from the thunderstorm of humanity, adjusting the dragon veins occasionally and could not completely control everything. Our hero reported that there was a detachment of knights nearby, and the dragon could die, because he asked if he could escape to spirit peak for a while. The dragon of course was interested in protecting the dragon veins. Our hero said that he was bound to destroy this country and then it would be easier to control the dragon vein, so he asked him to hide. So far of course the dragon understood everything our hero was saying. At that moment, the young man was very happy, saying that it was nice. But the dragon informed the demon lord that he could not be so strong, asking how the young man was going to destroy the kingdom. This was not a problem for our hero. The preparations had already been completed, and now, if everything goes according to plan, the country will be destroyed in one day," the young man reported. After hearing this, the dragon understood everything and believed our hero. The next moment, he broke off and flew to where the young man had said earlier. As he watched him go, the demon lord thought that at least he had nothing to worry about. Then he asked the abyss to accompany the dragon just in case. Realizing that there were knights left, our hero was going to destroy them himself. First, they will get information about the four that are on their tail. Then they would prepare a surprise attack, and he needed three more henchmen by nightfall. The Abyss wanted to make sure that nothing was left of them, informing our hero about it. Camp 4 of the Order Addressing the soldier who was on duty, he was informed that it was time for a shift, asking if he had something to report. He reported that everything was in order, and then, changing, one soldier asked the guard not to forget to look after Tyburn before going to bed. This was the moment when I thought that I would soon have to fight the King of the Ice Dragons. They had to be confident in their strength. The next moment, the knight, approaching the dragoon, asked how the animal was feeling. The dragoon looked at the knight, and the next moment, when he began to turn away from him, bit off his head. Our hero, standing behind the dragoon, informed the dragoon that he had killed the knight in an instant, saying that it was really silent. Our hero freed the dragon and praised him, saying that he was free with the first one. After all, our hero freed everyone from the collar of slavery. When the fire went out, it was a signal and informed the dragoon that he could run away if he wanted to. At that moment, our hero was walking away from the dragoon. 
Then, hiding behind a tree our hero, addressing the abyss, asked if the deployment had been completed. The abyss was telling him that everything was fine. Our hero was wondering if the abyss had taken the dragon slayer from the guy sent by the fifth warrant. But no way, it's in a tool bag, and he couldn't get to it. But he, our hero, understood that there was nothing to be done, and it was necessary to begin the execution of the plan. The next moment, he commanded this abyss, and it turned back into a giant dragon, attacking the knight's camp. After seeing the giant dragon, the knights did not expect this. At that moment, using his flame, he began to roast their camp, and everyone shouted that the camp had been destroyed. In the next moment, all the dragons broke free from their chains and were able to fly away. Eleven knights, noticing that his animals were flying away, tried to stop him, but realized that they had all escaped. Our hero, watching this, understood that the operation was completed. The next moment, she used the barrier to cover the whole place with it. And the next moment, one of the knights, watching this, tried to figure out what it was, because it was too dark to make out anything. Our hero at this moment reported that the barrier was holding them back, turning to the abyss. The abyss confirmed that this was indeed the case. The next moment, our hero was flying into the air. All the knights understood that nothing was visible. Hoshi at this point, he easily dealt with two. While dealing with them, our hero thought that the Dragon King's sword was too sharp, and then decided to start. At that moment, the knights were discussing something in the camp, saying that they did not have the equipment for new fights. The next moment, before he could finish talking about it, our hero interrupted them, dealt with one by one, considering that it was already the fifth one he could deal with. The next moment, the knights ran at our hero, trying to take him, but our hero dealt with each one in turn, continuing his countdown, so he was able to kill eleven people. At that moment, the knights wanted to deal with him, but our hero calmly dealt with each of them again. His death toll has reached 23. Our hero understood that out of 36, there were only 13 left. The next moment, the command was to turn on the light and saw the knights who were right in front of him asking them to calm down. The commander-in-chief reported that there were few enemies, then commanding to stand in the lamppost circle. Do not leave darkness and blind spots. Our hero, watching them from the side, understood that in front of them was the fifth order with their orichalcum armor, and even the fang of dragons would not penetrate it, he understood. He saw three small groups and that were standing in a circle. Only in the camp of the fifth order there are groups of five people, the rest have four. Most of the small fry and our hero could get rid of them, so it was necessary to move on to phase three. They will have to face a stronger opponent. Therefore, turning to the abyss, our hero commanded her to analyze the armor and weapons of all the defeated knights. I was watching at this moment with a comma order. The next moment, he would begin to proceed with his plan. Moving to his place behind the bushes, he alarmed the knights and one of them saw that something was moving there, pointing in the direction where our hero had recently been. Of course the partners couldn't see anything, but they had to be alert and concentrate. The commander-in-chief, looking at his knights, understood that they were scared and that they would get them if the knights did nothing. The next moment, he commanded to keep a distance and start moving separately. Split up and look for bandits. Each team acts as a decoy, but the only way to stop them is if they are attacked, they will know where and will be able to counterattack. So in the next moment, the knight saw that they had distanced themselves from Mr. Marquis. It was the fault of one of the knights, but trying to figure out what they needed to do because he really saw something. The next moment, a quarrel broke out between them and one of the knights ordered them not to quarrel because otherwise the enemy would find out where they were. The next moment, the knights heard a sound and realized that there was something there. It was our hero who was able to deal with everyone again. Looking at his opponents, he thought that they were weak and ugly, but at least they were not completely useless, and he was surprised that they noticed him. Our hero calculated everything, it was a quick kill and still almost gave himself away, so next time he thought about what he should have been more careful. He saw several more soldiers and destroyed them with one swing. Hoshi understood that there were only five opponents left, but since he was here, he had to try. Hoshi used the magic circle attribute of the tree. The next moment, the sword of the abyss was in front of him. With the help of the magic circle manipulation of the tree roots, the enemy will be captured and destroyed by the abyss ball. In the next moment, all the soldiers were captured by the magic of the tree, trying to figure out what it was. Turning to Lord Marquis, they tried to figure out what they needed to do. Marquis understood that it was the magic of the trees and it was aimed to capture them. The next moment, when he looked at the air, he was trying to figure out what it was in front of him, and then he saw a giant sword. Our hero seems to have calculated everything correctly at this moment, turning to the sword of the abyss, he attacked the opponents that were below with it. 
The knights, seeing this, informed Sir Marquis that this sword was falling right on them. Marquis saw this and shouted to his knights to chop down the roots and run away. The knights obeyed him, trying to cut the roots, but they could not move because they grabbed them very tightly. The next moment, the sword was dealing with them. Having dealt with everyone, our hero tried to raise what was happening there, watching from the air, he looked down and saw that it looked like he had only survived in the end. But their Marquis, the one with the Orichalcum, is truly a royal guardsman. Marquis looked up at him, trying to figure out who our hero would be. The next moment, the young man, hearing his question, asked the opponent if he didn't need to introduce himself first. Marquis shouted that he would not give his name after Hoshi destroyed all his charges. Upon hearing this, our hero reported that at that time he did not need it either. Turning to the abyss, our hero decided to find out who was in front of him. It was Marquis Swerty, 3rd Chapter 5 of the Order. He is more powerful than the commander of the Second Order. They knew that his magic attribute was a curse, and that he was well suited for the Dragon Slayer Sword, which was based on the Chaos attribute. Our hero realized that he was something more and thought that by the way, could the Dragon King fight with the Dragon Slayer Sword? To which the Abyss informed him that he could not compare with him, turning to his master. Our hero suggested continuing the battle without attacking the Dragon King with his fang. At that moment, Marquis was watching our hero, asked if he was ready for battle and attacked him. Seeing how fast Marquis was moving, our hero was surprised and dodged his punches. Hoshi was able to attack Marquis, which he clearly did not expect. Dodging the blows, the young man did not manage to do it. The next moment, he was flying away from our hero, and then you pulled out your sword and started attacking him. Our hero understood that this guy was an idiot and threw the Dragon Slayer sword trying to dodge him in the next moment. Then suddenly he realized that something was wrong, this sword flew out to Marquis, Taking the sword back, Marquis reported that our hero was just a pathetic coward. Hoshi, in response, believed that the man in front of him was no better, understanding what the Fifth Order really was. Standing against his opponent, our hero turned to the abyss, asking which hand of this guy was dominant. After all, he swung a sword with his right hand in training. But now his right arm was injured, as the young man noticed. The abyss was telling him everything it knew, and our hero was going to attack mainly from the left. Pulling it on a dragon-killing sword is a great idea however, the time before the sword returns after the throw is long, so it was necessary to attack in this interval, the young man guessed, looking at his opponent. The next moment, Marquis shouted to our hero that he should have been finished and began his attack. Making a lunge towards our hero, he tried to attack him with a sword, Hoshi managed to evade him. Then, noticing this, the enemy began to attack again. Hoshi, deviating from him, realized that now he could go on the attack. After Marquis pulled out his sword and waited for him to come back. Well, our hero did not calculate everything, and the time of the sword's return was too fast, so he barely managed to dodge. Marquis, catching his sword, wanted to attack our hero and Hoshi understood that the enemy had come up with something. It was a brilliant combination of offensive and defensive sword tactics, and he would have a hard time if he lost his sword, the young man realized, looking at his opponent's sword. Our hero guessed that the bowstring was made of orichalcum, as well as the armor. He thought it would take them longer to defeat him. Marquis understood that the young man was not just a murderer, because he was able to evade his attacks twice. At this moment, our hero reported that this was indeed the case, because he was the only survivor after their attack on the mountain peak. Introducing himself to Marquis as the Demon Lord Astral Hoshi. After seeing the real Demon Lord, the guy couldn't believe it. Our hero, addressing the abyss, reported that it was necessary to bind him with a fight. Marquis would counterattack, so we had to leave. Our hero will find a gap and shoot at him while he fights back. The next moment, the abyss, releasing fire, attacked the young man. He tried to fight her off using his sword and a poisonous scythe. This blow was supposed to be fatal. The next moment, an explosion formed and Marquis believed that it probably worked. After all, this attack can even kill a demon lord. But after the damned fog formed after the impact, he couldn't see anything. The consequences of being in it for a long time are bleeding, dizziness, pain and nausea, and impossible healing, it can even be said that not a single living being is able to survive it. As the fog began to clear and through the fog, Marquis saw the figure of our hero, thinking that it simply could not be that the young man was still on his feet. Throwing his weapon at him again, Marquis shouted that it was simply impossible, attacking the young man with it. The next moment, he saw the weapon pass through Hoshi, trying to figure out what was going on. He understood that this was exactly the demon that was said to have changed the course of the battle. Then the young man imagined the abyss. 
Then suddenly he was grabbed, and the guy realized that it was a black dragon, but did not understand where it came from. Our hero just reported that everything was thanks to him. Then after all, Marquis realized that this damn fog was the best distraction, and it was the only way to counterattack. He only needed to wait for the attack, but still to throw at the electrified sword. Marquis could not believe that our hero really hoped that he would do so and waited for him to throw the sword. And then our hero asked to appear with the abyss. The next moment, he attacked the youth. After dealing with the guy, our hero thought that Marquis was too naive. The next moment, despite his sword, he realized that it was not Mithril or Orichalcum. He wanted to see what was engraved on the Dragon Slayer's sword. After looking closely at the sword, our hero realized that if there was unusual material here, then it was necessary to analyze it. The abyss began its analysis. Our hero, pointing his hand at the sword, decided to find out what was there. In the next moment, he realized that the form consists of four attributes, space-time, saint, spell, and void. But it was unclear where the chaos attribute was. The anti-cursed attribute of holiness is woven into the formula. The attribute of the curse is needed here to neutralize, enhancing the effect of the mental impact of the attribute of emptiness, a one-way spatial barrier. Our hero, studying the sword, tried to understand what it was. The space-time attribute makes the sword itself look like an enclosed space, and the attributes of sanctity and cursing are used to create sealing techniques. Since there is curse protection and curse neutralization here, it looks like this seal is a cursed attribute. Does the void attribute also work inside a closed space? In other words, they activate the control. While our hero was studying the sword, the abyss turned to him, she thought that the effect of the dragon slaying sword was sealing. After learning about the sealing sword, Hoshi is surprised. The essence that produces the miasma is sealed inside. Simply put, a spirit and a great demon with the attribute of chaos. Hoshi realized that it was a sealing sword in front of him, and there is something in it that creates a miasma. Even our hero can use this weapon, so he thought that this sword could be kept for himself. Hoshi was trying to figure out what was actually sealed in that sword. Abyss explained that the space-time attribute was the main seal, so she didn't think it could be verified. Our hero asked if it was possible to dispel this technique, and the Abyss answered the Lord in such a way that it was impossible. Then it turned out that if they couldn't turn it off, then they would have to destroy it. Analyze the formula, they can stop it if they want to. Hoshi thought he would just talk to the reincarnation of the Ice Dragon King, but he got a lot more. At this moment, the Abyss was addressing him, informing him that they had finished gathering the knights. Our hero thought about the fact that it was just in time, so he asked to take care of it. The next moment, the Abyss asked if our hero was going to destroy this sword, and he reported that this was exactly the case. The next moment, he requested the Abyss Dragon Fang's mode to be activated, telling the others to analyze the ball and the Dragon Slayer. It requires activation so no miasma is released. The next moment, he started the analysis, and the analysis was completed. The next moment, the young man was screaming that it was necessary to destroy the sword and decided to attack it. When he swung at the sword it was split, and the young man was surprised at what followed from the sword. Then suddenly an immense amount of energy burst from the ball and our hero was trying to figure out what was happening. He even had to defend himself, realizing that there were a lot of magical elements here and tried to figure out what kind of monster was sealed in this sword. The next moment, when the fog began to clear, our hero asked the abyss to prepare for battle. Then a young man appeared, who reported that this fog was very annoying for him. In front of him was our hero, whom he saw, and tried to figure out who was in front of him. Standing in front of our hero and bowing to him, the young man reported that he was very grateful for the removal of the seal, addressing the demon lord. Our hero, seeing a stranger, tried to figure out who he was and wondered if there was a genie in front of him. The next moment, the young man apologized, saying that there was a high-ranking demon of arrogance and his name was Spelvia. After hearing about the high-ranking demon of arrogance, our hero looked at him carefully. Splevia reported that this was indeed the case. Hoshi wondered if he could have questioned him about what he was interested in. Upon hearing this, the guy reported that he was just a high-ranking demon, so Hoshi shouldn't have been so nice to him. Bowing to our hero, the demon asked to address him as an inferior. After all, he was his servant. Our hero, seeing this abrupt change in the young man, was a little confused. Then he decided to ask why Spelvia was sealed in this sword. He heard that only the great demons were sealed, the rest were destroyed, our hero reported. Splevia said that he did not know how it was passed on to descendants. But the higher demons were weakened because of the seal in the swords. There were seven higher demons in total. If you do not take into account their king, 
the great demon, all the demons are sealed in the remaining seven swords. After hearing this story, our hero pondered and asked what was going on about the middle and lower demons. Then the guy explained that their people came up with themselves. They are only their minions, and the minions of eight demons, including their king, who act in this world as messengers of the god of destruction. The next time, Hoshi wondered again what had caused Mr. Chunispelvia's surprise. The next moment our hero, addressing him, asked if he could help him a little. He reported on the cooperation. Splevia realized that he could benefit. Our hero told us that the reward would be the release of other demons, including the great demon. It certainly sounded tempting to Splevia. Splevia reported that he was not too greedy and thought it was more than a worthy reward. Splevia decided to ask what our hero wanted specifically from him. And the next moment, Hoshi just asked for help to destroy this country for him. Spelvia, looking at our hero in amazement, asked if the young man was serious. Our hero reported that it was so. Splevia decided to tell him that, first of all, the Lord's mission was to destroy humanity, and it was quite profitable for him. Our hero reported that this was surprisingly sound thinking for a demon. As Splevia said earlier, he is a demon of arrogance, not greed. The next moment, hearing these words again, our hero thought about who this man was, whom Spelvia means, really the seven-headed one. Then the young man decided to give the order. Hoshi wanted Spelvia to destroy some city. Bowing to his lord, Splevia asked what city our hero was talking about. When Hoshi appeared in front of him, he used telepathy. Selecting the target city for maximum damage, location and industrial characteristics that will not facilitate invasion from other countries, excluding Lindel, which city should have been the best, Hoshi wondered. Then it was clear to everyone what was being said about the industrial city of Nazca. Their target is the industrial city of Nazca, a city containing large military forces. Attacking this city will be resource intensive. He thought for a while, Splevia reported that he had never heard of this city before, which means everything has changed. Indeed, all the demons were sealed and all the spirit kings were prisoners except for him. Moreover, dragon kings are treated like material. These people have forgotten their place, Spelvia decided, realizing all this. The next moment, he asked for forgiveness because he had made such a mistake in front of the demon lord. Hoshi decided to assure that everything was fine. They have a strategy, they should have talked about it next time. Right now Hoshi wanted Spelvia to start by testing his abilities. Remembering the sword in which he was imprisoned, our hero asked, saying that the power of the spell fell because it was sealed. But Spelvia reported that, as expected by the demon lord, his skills certainly got worse. He needs to wait to regain some of his strength. And then he reported that if our hero wanted to see his peak, then he needed a month. Our hero knew that his new subordinate would give his best. Spelvia confirmed that this was exactly the case, asking if there was anything else that our hero wanted from him. After thinking a little, the young man tried to figure out what else he needed. But he didn't want people to find out about them. He will take care of everything in a month, Hoshi informed his new subordinate. And he will have to hide and test his abilities. Hoshi also explained that if they are discovered, people will form a strike force, and this may put an end to work. Right now, Spelvia could impersonate a human, but not in his true form. Spelvia reported that his boss was right, and the next moment showed our hero his true form. It was a shape, along with a tail and wings that developed behind his back, as well as horns and pointed ears. Our hero asked if Spelvia was using a weapon, because Hoshi could get it if needed. Spelvia reported that this was not required. He could fight without it, but mostly he just used magic, because he had mastered all the magical and non-magical attributes. Upon hearing this, our hero thought that everything was fine then, because he is a strong demon, besides a jack of all trades. Hoshi then reflected that they had a month to come up with a plan to attack Nazca. He will destroy the great city defenses, and the Abyss can help them in this. This is an industrial city, and there may be some special metals or something else unexpected. The Abyss reported that they even wanted to destroy the Dragon King, because Hoshi had forced him to flee to Spirit Peak, so he believed that they were losing. Our hero thought that his safety of the Ice Dragon King would be a priority. And then he informed his new subordinate that he would contact him in a month, but before that he wanted to show him a piece of power, the power of the Demon King. Therefore, he asked the demon to follow him. The next moment, our hero was flying into the sky, and the demon followed him and then he showed him how he had dealt with the knight's camp. After seeing this, the demon realized that these were the descendants of those who sealed him, and he had to destroy the evidence. Our hero asked the abyss to mutate into a dragon. The next moment, an abyss appeared in front of the demon, and when he saw it, he was stunned. 
Several more dragons appeared and our hero used the dragon's breath. Upon seeing this demon he was shocked by this power, reporting that it was simply incredible. Considering that our hero was indeed a demon lord and proved it. Hoshi reported that it wasn't over yet, and at that moment it even made the demon laugh. The next moment, our hero commanded the abyss to sweep them all away. The abyss, obeying the orders of our hero, attacked the camp, using its flames and sweeping away everything in its path. The lights went to the tent city where the knights had been until recently and burned everything. The demon was closely watching what our hero was doing. How the next moment an explosion was formed. Hoshi, after looking at this, reported that they had no more evidence. The demon confirmed it. Then our hero, jumping onto the abyss, reported that it was time for him to return and invited his new subordinate to continue working on himself. He agreed with the order of his boss, saying that he would do everything possible to meet his expectations. Our hero, rushing away on the abyss, was saying goodbye to his subordinate at that moment. The latter, watching his new master, thought about how beautiful he was. The next moment, the abyss descended near our hero's house, and the young man entering the house saw how defenseless Luke was sleeping with his friend Ark. This made our hero smile, and the next moment he fell on his bed and fell into a sweet sleep. The next day, the sun was shining and Luke was playing with his friend Ark as usual. Hearing that laugh made our hero wake up. The next moment, he heard how Mira and Sira, who were already on the threshold, came to pick up Luke. Seeing them, Luke was shocked. Our hero, opening his eyes, tried to wake up realizing that Sulphur and Worlds were nearby. Those who saw the sleepy young man greeted him, and then Sira noticed that our hero had a scar on his cheek, offering to look at him. She was so close that our hero was confused. The young man reported that he was just running through the forest and came across a branch. The girl of course did not believe what our hero was saying, so she looked at him intently. The young man tried to turn away from her, telling her that it didn't matter. He was going to be out of town for a few weeks, so he asked if he could ask the girls to look after Luke. Upon hearing this request, the girls agreed, and Luke, looking at our hero, did not understand if the young man would really leave him for these two. He reported that he just had a special assignment. When Sira and Mira heard about the special task, they started up. They tried to understand what kind of business our hero was taking on, what kind of task, interrogating the young man, whether they stood over his soul. Our hero, as always, usually replied that it was a secret. But the next moment, I thought to myself that they would certainly agree. Hoshi explained that he would be away for a week or so, and in the meantime they had to look after the hatch. Upon hearing this, the girls agreed, and at that moment Luke was very upset with what Hoshi had ordered. Addressing Luke, our hero apologized to him, saying that he would return as soon as he was done. Having cheered up again, Luke wished good luck to his master. He smiled back at him and went on his new journey, saying goodbye to the girls and his friend. Upon arriving at the guild, our hero met with his new friends, and when they saw him they were glad that the young man had come. They informed Hoshi that he was late, for which he had to apologize profusely. Once they gathered together, the head reported that since everyone was here, their task was to defeat the king of the ice dragons. But the most important condition is to defeat the ice dragon king faster than the knights. Everyone was inspired by this task and happy, and our hero thought that his plan was finally working. The next moment, they all headed for the icy mountain. Climbing the mountain, they tried to climb up, and climbing it realized that it was here that the king of the ice dragons was reborn, although they saw that there were no traces here. Yuta reported that he was still quite difficult and everyone else was seducing him, but Hoshi-san was still with them. Although they had walked so much, and he didn't look tired at all. The next moment, they were all trying to figure out if everything was okay with our hero, asking him to rest for a while, when the young man suddenly started coughing. Picking him up, Yuta carried our hero, and the next moment, when they came to this place, they were trying to figure out what had happened. Our hero was carefully watching the hole from the explosion and the knights who were standing next to him. But the knights ran past them, telling them to get out of the way. Yuta, angry at this knight, reported that they had a sick man. Hoshi asked Yuta to be calm because everything was fine. At that moment, they saw a girl who was addressing the guys because she didn't care. They needed to find the Dragon Slayer Sword, a national treasure. Upon hearing this, everyone was shocked. A knight running past our heroes reported that this was what he was talking about. If they wanted to rest properly, another place is nearby. It certainly annoyed Yuta that the knight was so arrogant. Lucas couldn't stand that attitude either. Then the girl who was walking with them asked if they wanted her to burn them, then she could do it. They all supported Kaki and informed her that they would help her in such a case. 
Our hero at that moment understood what it meant that they were looking for this sword and needed to stall for more time. The young man asked not to do this and go home. After returning to the city, they came back to the guild and reported that the knights were there. Upon hearing this, the head reported that it was impossible, and our heroes reported that they met them at that place. The head of the guild was trying to figure out whether it was worth going so far to defeat the king of the ice dragons. And then he thought about it, saying that they should have considered this issue more carefully, saying that he had withdrawn this request, and so far everyone was free. It was a plus for our hero. When he returned to the castle, he told all this to Crystal. He reported that it wasn't that important, but it looks like the Demon King did a great job, looking at how the young man lay and rested. Yawning, he reported that it was natural, because after looking at the dragon, he said that he was a little kinder than before. The dragon did not answer him and only stared into the distance. And our hero knew that it was already too late, but the destruction of the country is a dreary business. Political dynamics, interference in the affairs of other countries, and damage calculations, but what was to be done, after the victory there was a lot to think about. The Dragon King heard our hero's thoughts and reported that he knew what the young man was doing. Upon hearing this, our hero said that of course it was so. The Demon King reported that if the young man changed his mind, he thought that the guy could stay in the Crystal Palace of the Demon Lord. Upon hearing the Dragon's suggestion, our hero reported that this was his goal. Humanity has become too arrogant. The dragon, upon hearing this, reported that if so, then our hero should not have worried about it. If he needed power, the dragon king was always here and ready to do his best. Our hero thanked Crystal for his help, and he smiled at him and was ready to help him. This castle was impregnable. Lure out the king, restore order after the destruction of the kingdom and create new content. The kingdoms of the National Order are the intervention of enemies and allies. After hearing about the allies, our hero thought about it, and the next moment informed the dragon that he had given him an idea. Thanks to Crystal again, Hoshi understood that there are such people, they sell their souls to the devil just to satisfy their desires. Margriff is the capital. Having gathered, everyone knew that everyone was worried, so it was necessary to deal with this first. In addition to the 40% help craze, they would like to get a prescription for a special medicine. The king reported that it was too much, did they forget themselves by telling administrator knees. The administrator, speaking, reported that everything was not like that at all, addressing King Perolk, it's a fair price, there is an obvious reason for this, because they are not a friendly state, to which the king replied that to betray his state is to betray himself. After all, they needed a fair price and fair intentions, our king said when informing his new guest. He slowly lit his cigarette. The king reported that money is the price, and potions are proof of intent. During the war freedom fighters must also participate in the war. That his arrival reported that it was not true when freedom fighters took part in the war, it was not at their request, it was their voluntary decision. It was necessary to leave this question for now, but I was looking forward to the king's answer. He looked at the departing knees and was very unhappy. After leaving the king, knees returned to the Milliglyph Plaza Hotel. Lighting up his cigarette again, he thought that the king was surprisingly optimistic, was it still so difficult to get the medicine that was needed? Exhaling, Nies thought that he should not only negotiate with him directly, but also try to manipulate the nobles. The demon lord that this kingdom is having a hard time with, thinking about it, Nies was grateful to him for continuing to wreak havoc. At that moment, our hero appeared right next to him, saying that he did not know that this person had such an opinion of him. What surprised Knees, who did not expect to see the Demon King next to him, or rather an unfamiliar voice. When Knees saw our hero standing behind him scared, he jumped off his seat and started shouting, asking who the young man was right in front of him. Our hero, looking at him, of course knew what he was thinking right now, but advised not to worry about it. He wasn't going to tell anyone anything about what he had just heard from him. Hoshi was also not going to record anything. Hoshi was only here to negotiate with Knees. Our hero was wearing a scary mask that hid his face, so of course Knees was scared of him. But when the young man began to speak, he decided to listen to him. After hearing that the young man wanted to negotiate, Knees did not understand what kind of negotiations he was talking about. And then he asked if our hero really wanted to tell him that he was the messenger of some important person. Hoshi reported that his guesses were wrong, because he was an envoy from himself, and he also negotiates for himself. Upon hearing this, the interested Knees was surprised and looked attentively at our hero. Hoshi asked to be allowed to introduce himself. The next moment, standing under the light of the moon, our hero reported that he was the lord of the astral demons. The same demon lord that people have been feuding with for many years. 
Hoshi had heard that he was quite popular here. At that moment Nis, looking incredulously at our hero, did not raise what he was saying at all. Hoshi, seeing his look, understood that if he didn't believe him, then he could prove it to him. By suggesting that you try to attack him with magic and he will simply dispel it. Nis looked at our hero carefully, seeing that he was quite serious. The next moment, taking his glass and drinking from it, he decided to use the magic of water as our hero guessed. Nis thought that it must have been some kind of joke. But the next moment, when he wanted to attack him with water, he realized that he was not succeeding. Our hero was standing next to him at that moment. Nis, who took water to attack our hero, just spat it out of his mouth. The next moment our hero, looking at his opponent, asked if he was happy with what he saw now. Nis did not understand what it was, he thought to himself that it was definitely the void magic of the demon lord and whether there was dispelling magic. Looking at our hero, I asked myself these questions. Hoshi tried to do something, but wondered if the plan to suddenly reveal his true identity had failed. Coming closer to Nis, our hero asked if the man wanted our hero to show him something else, void magic, or what he would say. The next moment Nis, backing up a little, reported that he believed our hero to some extent and reported that no more evidence was needed. Hoshi thought that he had succeeded, so he offered to negotiate. After all, Nis has recently been negotiating with the state and negotiating whether they can get support from the Union. Upon hearing this, that our hero knew about it, Nis was very surprised. After all, he didn't understand how the Demon Lord could know, because it was top secret. Hoshi said that there was nothing to hide from him, so now he was remembering the very moment when his raven was watching over Luke's family. He could also keep an eye on everyone. Vladika also said that Hoshi was following Nis everywhere. Our hero, turning away from Nice, reported that people needed the technology to produce medicine, but this is the trump card of the country, its secret potion. Therefore, I asked if Nies had something worthwhile in return. Nies, looking at our hero, understood that the guy had a frightening level of intelligence gathering ability. Please contact Vladika, Nies informed us that he would like to hire our hero. Upon hearing this, the young man went berserk, talking about how a person could not be arrogant. Nis is just a stain on this earth, the Lord reported, angered by his words. Nis was scared that the young man was so angry, and our hero reported that he was alive only because he was useful to him. Angry, our hero informed Nis that if he wanted to live, he had to prove his usefulness and asked if he was ready to sell his soul to him. At that moment, Nis looked at the young man in fright, and then, hearing about the soul, decided to ask what our hero meant. And Hoshi told him that it was very easy, Nis just had to do what our hero told him. It will be useful for him, and of course, to get the technology of the potion that Nis wanted. When he heard that our hero could give him the potion, Nis was very surprised. Vladika reported that this was indeed the case, because he had told him earlier that he would be useful to him, and could get what he wanted as long as he carried out his orders. When Nis heard about all this, he was very surprised, and our hero said that it was not because of the medicine, but because of something bigger. Our hero reported the next moment that he would be able to capture the whole country. Upon hearing this, Nis was extremely surprised. Hoshi asked if he knew how many cities there were in this country. Nis told him that there were 18 cities, and they were all protected by great protection. To which the demon lord told his new ward that in fact his demons had penetrated all of them, which Nis could not believe in any way. Then Hoshi decided to ask him if he knew what had happened in the capital, then reporting that it was the work of his henchmen. After hearing about it, Nis couldn't believe it. The young man said that such destruction is the strongest magic, and who uses void magic Nis should have known, because it was the demon lord himself. Our hero said that their protection is not an obstacle for him. At this moment, tossing a coin in his hand, our hero threw it towards Nis. After catching her, Nis watched our hero, who said that there was nothing wrong with placing demons in the city, asking if Nis understood what he was talking about. Later he reported that soon the industrial city of Nazca would fall, and in the blink of an eye the entire kingdom would follow, the entire royal family, and the nobles controlling the country would be killed. At that moment, Nis asked what our hero wanted from him. At that moment, Hoshi didn't understand if Nis was so stupid that he didn't know what to do with all this information. He understood what the young man was talking about. Then he told him that he would give him a country and Nis could do whatever he wanted with it. If neighboring countries do not interfere in it after the destruction, then it will be a paradise on earth for him. Our hero looked closely at Nis who now understood everything. After all, he cannot afford to be at enmity with other countries. Hoshi reported that if he sold this information to other countries, he would have problems. 
but compared to the profit he could give him, he asked what was better. At that moment, Mies asked himself if he was ready to sell his soul to the demon lord, and then he asked if that was what our hero meant. Hoshi realized at that moment that he had knees on the hook. Hoshi then informed him that he did not want to hear his answer, he had to prove it to him by his actions. Leaving through the window, the demon lord announced that he would be in touch and said goodbye to his new ward. After hearing about the fall of Nazca and about everything that was told to him, Knees was extremely happy. He wanted to see what the demon lord would do next. A week later, the industrial city of Nazca. Our hero was finally here. He didn't see any problems turning to Spelvia, who was with our hero. Spelvia reported that there really were no problems, but that's when Hoshi ordered them to be destroyed. Spelvia obeyed our hero because his will was the law for him. The next moment, Spelvia used the Devil's Gate and asked Thunder Demon, Enigma, Flash, Wolf Demon, Forte to come out. At that moment, crazy monsters galloped next to him, who went forward to the city, at the command of Spelvia. An attack began on the city our hero, having destroyed his barrier, realized that now nothing was keeping the demons from attacking. The next moment, one factory exploded and people were trying to figure out what was going on. Noticing that it was dangerous, everyone asked each other to leave. And then they realized that it was the demon lord. Everyone started running away in different directions and tried to figure out where the knights were. Our heroes, the demon lord and Spelvia, at this moment were closely watching the city, which was turning into chaos. Spelvia reported that everything was easy and smooth, addressing the lord. As soon as the knight starts moving, Hoshi will move out. Apparently, it will take a little longer, Spelvia reported. Our hero thought it was more peaceful here than expected. They can easily take away the magic sphere. Spelvia thought that people were truly terrible. But apparently some of them weren't so bad, and offered to look where he was pointing. Our hero at that moment saw two men who were standing with swords against a giant demon, trying to fight him. The guys were trying to figure out what kind of monster it was in front of them. The girl standing next to the guy, and addressing him as a role, reported that if she remembered correctly, then this demon was a medium-level enigma. He radiates the white light of destruction, because she read about it in a book. The next moment, the young man shouted that if it was a demon, he did not think that they had all been destroyed. He was completely shocked by what his partner was telling him. Turning to Miria, he asked how it was necessary to take care of this. The girl reported that it was an attacking demon, so its defense is not so good. His weak point is the big eye on his back, so it was possible to get closer and destroy him. Miria reported that she would not cover Roll with her magic attacks. Roll thought that his girlfriend had gone crazy because he couldn't get close to this terrible demon. But it was too late to think because the demon began to attack and the guy had to run at the monster realizing that he did not even warm up before the battle. The next moment, when the young man began to attack the opponent, he was about to attack him. The young man was of course scared and he prayed that his opponent would die faster. He asked Miria to take care of it even faster, because this light that was coming from the monster's mouth was supposed to attack the young man. Miria screamed that she couldn't concentrate, so she asked Roll to shut up. The next moment, using an ice spear, she began to attack and shouted at Roll to start aiming at the eye and now attack their opponent. At that moment, the Roll attacked the monster, aiming directly at its eye, and the next moment there was nothing left of the Roll. Miria, looking at the opponent, did not understand what was happening, then she saw that another monster appeared in front of him. Our hero, watching this fight, thought that these guys were close to dealing with these monsters. When Spelvia heard the remarks, he thought that they didn't have a single chance. Conditionally gave them hope, and then looked at their despair. Our hero, hearing his remarks, thought that it was very demonic. Spelvia reported that after all, he is a demon. Our hero thought it was not cowardice, but tactics. If they had had enough time, they would have won the battle anyway, but they couldn't take any chances now. Looking at the two defeated ones who tried to fight the monsters, our hero thought. Spelvia was at this moment trying to get the demon lord to look at the situation. After all, people were running from the gate. Hoshi shouted that it was necessary to eliminate them. He won't let any of them escape. Hoshi needed control of the gate, Hoshi commanded, addressing Spelvia. He obeyed his master and went on the attack. Hoshi reported that there were eight gates, 16 enigmas, and a fort each had to be called. Deploy two at each gate. The next moment, the city was in chaos, and there was a fire everywhere. All the people were trying to rush to the gate to escape. Children with women should have been allowed to leave first. One of them was running away with her child at that moment, but ran into someone's back and tried to figure out what was happening, because it was necessary not to stop and continue moving forward. 
The next minute, when the girl wanted to move forward and bumped into her back, she informed everyone ahead to hurry up because she had a child. But the frightened people right in front of her were looking ahead because the demons had occupied the gate. The next moment, the demons that were right in front of them began to deal with everyone. At that moment, the villagers, seeing the demons, tried to figure out where the knights were and called for help. Spelvia reported that as our hero could see, they took control of all the gates. Our hero thanked Spelvia for her good work, and then saw that the knights had finally appeared. But I realized that they were already too late. Now it was Hoshi's turn, and he was shouting that he was leaving everything to Spelvia. Spelvia wished his lord a good time. Our hero, breaking from his seat, flew towards the knights. Now it was necessary to deal with them. He was wondering where they were hiding the magic core. The next moment, he used telepathy and asked the abyss to find out where the magic core was located. But then, it turns out, it was in the basement of the building that was right in front of our hero. Going down in front of the knights, they tried to figure out who was in front of them, and whether he understood what kind of place it was. Our hero dealt with them in one second. Our hero of course was aware of where he was and moved towards the building he was interested in, dealing with everyone in his path. The next moment, there was a magic core in front of him, which he finally found. And here the birth of a new dungeon will begin. Pointing his hand at the core, our hero began to absorb. In the next moment, absorbing the magic core increased the supply of magic as he sensed and used the connection to the dragon vein. Addressing the abyss, our hero ordered to collect all the other magic cores, then they could only wait and see. The next moment there was an earthquake, people felt it and understood that they had to leave here, but they were afraid of demons outside. But if the house collapses, then they will be finished. At that moment, people saw that behind them, a monster had begun to appear from the recently ordinary coins. The next moment, when they turned around, they saw a giant dragon, realizing that it looked like it was the end. The abyss in the form of a dragon was able to deal with the people from the house that had recently stood in front of them, directing its giant flame at all living things that were next to it and dealing with everyone. People tried to run away from her, realizing that they were dragons and they had to take up arms to fight demons. The knights tried to protect the people, but it was all in vain. The knights were attacked by evil spirits, they tried to attack from the left and restrain them at all costs. The next moment, running out of the way, they tried to resist the demons, evade their attacks. Our hero also went on the defensive and landed behind the knights, silently so that they would not hear him. The knights at that moment commanded that they had to prepare for the attack and use support magic. Looking at these knights, Hoshi understood what they really were like. He thought that they were smart. At that moment, one of the knights dealt with the demon. Our hero was quietly watching what they would do next. The knights tried to be on their guard because the demons were getting closer to them and there were dragons above. The next moment, the knight was dealing with another demon again. Our hero thought that it was not bad, but at least they did not give up. At this moment, our hero thought about Spelvia. When the knights saw him, they did not understand who was in front of him because Spelvia looked very much like an ordinary nobleman. But he was a stranger to the knights, so they suddenly stopped in front of him, trying to figure out what kind of person he was. Getting off his horse, one of the knights tried to ask what the young man was doing because he had to get out of here. The next moment, Spelvi dealt with him with a wave of one hand and invited the others to attack him, assuming their true form. The knights, watching this, tried to figure out who was in front of them, addressing their commander. The knight tried to warn his comrades, telling them to run away as soon as possible, but it was too late. Spelvia, on the other hand, believed that the knight should have asked his permission before saying anything. After all, he can introduce himself. It seemed to him that the knight was in command of the squad, so he finished him off first. Therefore, regarding his performance, he introduced himself as Spelvia, the supreme demon of pride. Now these knights that were in front of him had to be finished. The knights were confident of course, they thought that the demon could not win because they had a numerical advantage. Then, using magic, they tried to attack the demon, but it was useless, the demon was able to deal with them in turn. The next moment, having dealt with another knight, the demon carefully looked at the remaining ones. The knights thought that the armor was useless against this creature, since he could figure it out even through it. The only thing they came up with was to keep their distance, but it was impossible to keep their distance. Spelvia was already next to the other knights, saying that they simply could not escape because his order was to destroy everyone. He offered to continue here, he had not been doing this for a long time. Our hero, watching Spelvia, admired how easily he dealt with knights. At that moment, his delight was interrupted by the abyss, informing the lord that they had found all the magic cores. 
There were five magic cores left, and an abyss dragon was sent to each of them. The magic core is super dense magic crystals. They couldn't be hit by normal attacks and had to be allowed to use their breath. Our hero was wondering at that moment if it was possible to blow them up. It has a mark on it so that you can track its location, which is quite an effective destruction of the city. Hoshi agreed with her suggestion, saying that she could use her breath. The next moment, the abyss obeyed our hero, and he informed them that they had to use the dragon's breath. The next moment, the abyss obeyed our hero. They all used their power. At that moment, Spelvia felt this power, and he thought what a beautiful sight was right in front of him. They should have hurried and prepared for the holiday by dealing with the next knights and leaving him, the demon thought. There was an explosion, and the next moment, in place of this, there were still magic cores, many dragons were circling. Looking at the hole that formed there, and the next moment our hero landed. This was it, the fall of Nazca, which he was looking at now. At that moment, the rumors reached the royal palace very quickly. Looking at the photo on which our hero's new dungeon was visible, the king could not forgive him in any way. Speaking of which, it was a terrible demon, and he was just a terrible person. All the people gathered looked attentively at the king and waited for what decision he would make next. The king reported that there was no more time, he and the fifth order would go to battle with the demon lord. Upon hearing this, everyone reported that the king was not allowed to do this, because their protection was too weak. The king said that it was not a request, it was an order. They would crush him, destroy everything with their army, and he would make him regret that he had contacted them. Talking about demons, the king was completely out of his mind. After looking at everyone, he informed them that they would use supplies, that they were now spending money on attacking the dungeon, and everyone had three days. After hearing that the king was talking about the entire army, his subordinates decided to ask what he meant. But the king explained what it means, with the exception of the two orders responsible for security, all knights go to Nazca. And the king also commanded that everyone take four dragon slayer swords and gather as many healers as possible. Everyone listened attentively to the king. At that moment, the king said that he understood about the concern, but this time the whole army had to join the campaign. Addressing Nays Flanders, the director of the Freedom Guild, the king ordered him to explain why he was following his orders. He reported that he was summoned to the king because it was decided to lease the guild to the army. They have been negotiating for some time. It was time before we decided to lend them their powers. The negotiations were difficult partly because of the assumption that the guild would not interfere in the governance of the country however, the collapse of Nazca had a hard impact on everyone, which is why they decided to cooperate. Hearing that they were with them, everyone thought it was encouraging, even the king's advisor was very surprised. Nays at that moment thought of course that it was very good. But could they trust him, given his behavior that day, the advisor thought, looking at him carefully. Now the Demon King has become too dangerous for humanity, he mused to himself. Nees talked about how they were the Freedom Guild and they were here to defeat the demons. Border security should have been provided to them. The King confirmed his words, saying that they would do everything possible to defeat the Demon Lord. It seems that Nazca, where the Demon Lord is located, has already turned into a dungeon. Each commander must assemble his knights in the vicinity of Nazca. In the name of the 28th King of the Kingdom of the Knights of Argyle, Perloika Argyle, he ordered all knights except two of the order to gather in Nazca within a week. The fifth order must enter the interior of Nazca with him, armed with dragon slayers. The second order will strengthen security. Nays was supposed to take over border protection for the next few days. The king shouted that justice would surely prevail. He swore this to the knights and the dead inhabitants of Nazca, informing all the heads of the orders who sat in front of him. He informed them that this time they had to really crush him, the demon lord. Nays thought that everything was working exactly as the master wanted it to. A week later Nazca. The knights having come to Nazca tried to figure out if it really was this city. The once industrial city has now turned into just a desert. Argyll Knight's kingdom, at this moment Perloika Argyll informed that the chief of staff was immediately called and the latest news and plans were explained. The chief of staff of the directorate was summoned and Mar Reed appeared before the king, saying that now he had to be allowed to explain the final strategy of the attack. The essence of this operation is one attack by His Majesty the King of the Fifth Order. His Majesty will mount his griffin, the Fifth Order of the Stunted Beasts, and make a lightning attack from the sky, on the Tower of the Demon Lord in the center of the city. This is a short war uniting the strongest elite of this country. The Freedom Guild will help defend themselves so they have no choice except to fight and considering the annual costs. Fortunately, the demon lord is on the top floor of the tower and cannot attack him directly. 
they will strike here and victory will not be long in coming. Here, addressing Chief Reed, one of the people wanted to ask him a question. Reed, having heard about the question, wanted to listen carefully to Master Kelvin, who was standing right in front of him. He reported that according to the young man, the demon lord is at the top of the tower. But I decided to ask what evidence he has of this. It was Flood Kelvin, commander of the Fifth Order, in front of him. Then Reed offered to take a look at the letter he was giving to Flood Kelvin. After looking at this letter, he reported that it was an image that had been taken an hour ago in it. It showed the demon lord and Spelvia, his accomplice. Reed explained that the figure on the left was the lord of the astral demons, to which the knight reported that this guy was surprisingly young. But Sigil knew it, and reported that it was definitely this guy. Sigil, the commander of the first squadron, had already met him once. After all, he remembered him, and then looking at Spelvia, who was walking next to the lord, they realized that this was his new ally. Reed reported that while the elite were attacking, other units would begin a siege. Addressing the First Order, he will ask them to exterminate the demons around the tower. The Demon Lord controls a dragon-shaped creature and is capable of aerial combat. The Third Order will use flying ships, the Fourth Order of Wyverns. The commander of the Fourth Order was Real Relmanov Necking, and the commander of the Third Order was Aina Kyrgyz, and they had to take the sky. That was all the command was given and Reed wished everyone good luck. Our hero was thinking at that moment that the Argelian army had arrived as planned. Spelvia confirmed this by addressing his master, saying that according to their scouts, there were about 50,000 people in the army. Our hero of course said that the numbers did not matter to him. They have it up their sleeve. The young man thought that there would not be 1,000 of them who got to him. Spelvia reported that our hero was right, but they had a problem. And the problem was the elite. According to the Abyss Five Order, that is, the entire Royal Guard are the elite. Although they killed one, there were still ten of them. The leaders of the First, Fourth, Fifth Orders, and the King should have been saved. On the First, ask Spelvia what she will say about the Second and Third Orders. Hoshi understood that the Second Order was not involved, the Third Order was good at magic, but magic itself did not work on him. Spelvia reported that it was faithfully addressing his master, and then Hoshi reported that the last problem was the Dragon Slayer Sword. Spelvia replied at that moment that the young man had to cope here as well as be himself because he probably had some kind of plan. And our hero, hearing his partner, reported that this was indeed the case. He really had a definite plan in store. Hoshi said that his plan was certainly ready. Their swords would not do any harm, but he prepared something else and asked Spelvia if he had seen the top of the tower and the basement. Upon hearing this, Spelvia reported that he had never seen it. Our hero confirmed his words, saying that it was so, but he would let him know when they approached, asked him to wait and keep an eye out. Bowing to his master, Spelvia decided to fulfill his wishes. Our hero decided at that moment to look at their little game, talking about all the knights who went to his castle. At this moment, the First Order, led by Sigil, was ready to march. Sigil was thinking that all the dragoons were out of control. This time he was riding a horse and thinking about the demon lord. Looking through his army, Sigil shouted that the whole army had to follow him, and they had to slay the demon lord. Thinking to myself that nothing will help the lord anyway. The commander of the fourth squad ordered his men to rise. At that moment, they were heading towards our hero. The demon lord, who can dispel magic, is not the best opponent, the girl from the third squad thought, and her desire was to deal with the demon lord. Therefore, commanding the third order, she ordered them to be ready in the air. The girl reported that if black dragons or other demons appeared, she wanted them to be destroyed immediately. Everyone obeyed her order and walked forward. The king, being also on the attack, reported that it had been a long time since he had fought with the guys. His partner asked the king to be careful, because a strong enemy was coming against them. The king certainly knew that. Spelvia reported that they were in motion. Our hero, watching them from his throne, reported that there were quite a lot of them, and that they would be here in two hours. Upon hearing such an accurate time setting, Spelvia asked our hero if he was sure of this. All the deployed demons were weak, but our hero reported that they did not matter. When the demons are dead, their magic will return to the dragon's vein, and this is another necessary sacrifice. When their airships approach, our hero simply activates a device that will release void dragons. Upon hearing this, Spelvia asked if he also needed to call his assistance. Our hero reported that he was able to do it. The gargoyles of the hellish prisons were summoned by Spelvia, and he ordered them to kill people at will. Coordination was not required of them. The gargoyles attacked the Fourth Order. 
When they noticed the fourth order of these demons, they understood that they were medium rank demons, and everyone was ordered to move to the front line. The next moment, the dragoons attacked the demons. The leader of the fourth order thought that they were very weak, but their number was simply incredible. Therefore, he reported that there could be a lot of them, but they were still insignificant, a command to all that they had to go through. The knights agreed with him, but showed the commander that black dragons had appeared there. Sigil, seeing the opponents, also went into battle, dealing with one after another. Knights fell in battle, and a fierce battle ensued. In the next moment, Sigil, looking at this, recalled the terrible events of the last battle when they faced the demon lord. The next moment, other demons appeared, which Sigil began to fight, telling them that he would not surrender to them. Fighting with another demon, Sigil walked forward. There was also a fierce battle in the air between the demons and the dragoons that the fourth squad had. While fighting with them, the commander also tried to deal with all of them as much as possible. The next moment, the knight asked his attention to look there, pointing at the black dragon behind them. Turning around, the commander ordered everyone to get ready to fire, and the next moment, commanding them to fire at this dragon. After the explosion, the commander carefully watched what happened. But he also understood that the explosion had not touched this dragon in any way, and he did not understand how strong this dragon was. The next moment, he was already giving up mentally, realizing that they would not be able to stand it. But all he had to do was respond to the dragon's attack, and pointing his sword at it, the commander tried to repel it. And then, looking more closely, he saw two more dragons coming straight at him with their attack, and all he could do was dodge it. Then suddenly someone came to his aid, and then he saw the ship and Lady Reyna. The girl was screaming that she was here to help them. Turning to the Lord, she asked to leave the Black Dragon to their third squad. Our hero, watching this, realized that the airships were finally approaching, and then turning to Spelvia, who was next to him, our hero asked if he wanted to see a trick here. Spelvia, of course, did not want to miss this. Our hero used telepathy activation, commanding them to connect to the network. The Abyss was supposed to control Nazca's magic core. Our hero used telepathy. The next moment, turning to the core, everyone felt its power. Our hero used the art of destruction and activation. The next moment, all the squad leaders were trying to figure out what it was, because the earth, which they were not looking at, was shining. Then the leader of the third squad realized that it was a magic circle and all the knights were also trying to look at the ground. After all, there was a pattern of light floating on it. The next moment, they were all startled and began to fall down. The commander of the third squad realized that it was a magic circle of attraction since they began to be pulled to the ground. The next moment, hitting the ground, all the dragoons began to die, as well as the people who could not group in time. Sigil, once on the ground, realized that his body was very heavy, and then he saw that a giant airship was falling directly on him. The airship fell, and there was a terrible explosion, and the knights who were on it and next to it were killed. The next moment, the other airships also began to fall after that. Watching this, Squad 4 and Squad 1 tried to figure out if this was really happening. Sigil couldn't believe it, looking at the airships in front of him, because it was the Third Order and Lady Rihanna was among them. Looking at the dead knights, Sigil couldn't believe it and cursed the demon lord who had done all this. At that moment, a dragon in the form of an abyss appeared in front of him. Sigil understood that he had to fight him now. The dragon attacked him, and he tried to deflect his blows and deal with the dragon. He thought he had dealt with one, he saw another and did not realize that this force was powerful. He realized that he did not have time. Then Lady Reyna came to his aid, saying that at this distance only a magician could help him. Saving Sigil, who was shocked by the power that was right in front of him. Upon seeing Lady Reyna, Sigil was glad that she was safe, and the girl reported that she was also glad to see that Sigil was fine too. Then she said that the Third Order was almost completely erased. It was a miracle that she survived on her own. She was severely injured, but they helped her in time and also restored her magical power by giving her potions. Sigil thought that they were just demons, but they had to go forward. Addressing Rene, Sigil informed them that their goal was the top of the tower and they had to hurry. The king, looking at the dead dragoons, understood that it was bad and wondered what was going on. After all, the sudden gravity had increased many times, and now it was also difficult for the griffins to fly away. At that moment, the king reported that the demon lord was ruining everyone's life and he would not allow him to continue doing this. The next moment, the king went to the dragon, which was right in front of him, telling him that he had to get ready and ask to prepare dragon slayer swords for him. Having dealt with one, he realized that several more were flying at him. In the next moment, everyone using dragon fighters decided to attack those who were coming at them. 
The knights watching this were very happy, looking at what a powerful force the orders were. They reported that they would never give in to the vile demon lord, and then they heard the king's voice. The king cried out that they would not be defeated. He swore an oath to this on the sword that he held in his hand, to give the most decisive rebuff to the demons and carry out a just revenge for Nazca. All the knights supported him and rejoiced for their king. Our hero heard distant shouts in his tower. Laughing, I thought that it looked very interesting. At that moment Spelvia, who was standing next to him, was annoyed that these people dared to call the demon lord treacherous, even though they themselves hunted dragons and captured the spirits. Our hero was thinking that when the demon lord does his job, he just becomes a threat to humanity. Therefore, it is not difficult to understand why this king wants to get rid of him. Sitting on his throne, Hoshi believed that it was time to show humanity the wonders of nature. Hoshi understood that now no one would help these people anymore. Their kingdom of knights will fall today. Spelvia, looking at how confident our hero was, was very happy. Our hero thought about how they bravely marched through the maze, but they will die not knowing that their kingdom has perished. Therefore, turning to Spelvia, our hero had an order for him. Realizing that he could help his master, Spelvia was very happy, saying that he was at his service. Hoshi was about to use a magic transfer circle at that moment to transfer him to the royal city of Margriff and offered to kill all the nobles to him. Hoshi wanted him to deal with the second knight commander Oist Zelik, saying that he would come to him himself when he made a mess. Hoshi gave him complete freedom, telling him that Spelvia would bring them disasters they could not imagine. Upon hearing our hero's order, Spelvia was inspired and glad that he was ordered to act in complete freedom. Our hero gave him two hours, and informed him that he would notify him when the time came. The next moment, Spelvia disappeared, appearing near Margriff, the royal capital. Watching the city from above, Spelvia knew that he had been ordered to kill all the nobles and was trying to decide what he needed to do. Therefore, he decided to make a big fuss first. The next moment, he used his power. A giant vortex appeared in front of Spelvia. It was so powerful that when people felt it, they held on to pillars and various things because the vortex was so strong that it sucked them in there. Spelvia replied that there were pathetic insects dancing, addressing people, and offering them to save their pathetic lives. Our hero, watching Spelvia across the abyss, thought about how he gave his order and how perfectly Spelvia executed it. At that moment, life was in full swing in the city, no one suspected what was going to happen next. Using the coins that our hero poisoned with the abyss, he ordered her that she, who was hiding in every city, had to attack. Collect magic cores in each city and bring them to Nazca. The next moment, explosions rang out in the city, people were buried under buildings, and the elite tried to escape faster, because it should have been safer behind the walls as they believed. Many did not understand why there were no knights here at such a time to save them. Spelvia, watching all this horror, thought about what a good view it was in front of him, and then realized that, as for the destruction, he had to decide what to do with it. Spelvia thought the fire would be perfect. Therefore, by summoning fire magic, the demon wanted a rain of fire to fall on this city. He used his attack, which was called Armageddon. A rain of fire rained down on the city, destroying everything in its path. People were trying to figure out what kind of smoke it was, and the next moment, without having time to think, they just died in it. It was very interesting for Spelvia to watch the expression of pain on people's faces, after looking at everyone who experienced it, the demon was extremely happy. Then, looking at the rest of the city, he thought that he had a lot of work to do. Spelvia decided to call his friends. The next moment, opening the gates of the prison, he offered to let out a swarm of parasitic demons that fell directly on people, who has not yet seen what was happening at that moment and felt the parasites that began to fall on them. In the next museum, parasites infected people. After infecting people, they started attacking each other and killing each other. Spelvia, watching this, saw that these parasites that attacked people were destroying the weak. And then the second order appeared. The demon remembered that he had a special purpose, he was instructed to eliminate the captain of the second order. And Spelvia thanked him for saving him from having to look for him. The next moment, Spelvia appeared right in front of him. When he saw our demon, he reported that with his black wings and tail he looked like one of those high-ranking demons from Legends. The captain of the Second Order asked if it was true what this demon had forgotten here. Spelvia replied that he had come to kill him.